It's whiskey, but not as we know it. With the amount of V-pubs that's gone out just now, I think it's reasonable to sacrifice just one of them to bourbon. Let's explore. Hello, whiskey folk. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Thursday night's V Pub. I hope you're all doing very, very well. It's fantastic to see so many of you waiting on the pub doors open. Over 180 of you approaching 200. Wonderful stuff. I hope it's not too cold out there. If you're anywhere near where I am right now, the weather continues to be mild and kind to us. I hope it's the same where you are as well. Very different topic tonight. I hope you don't mind. I'm very curious. I'm very excited about this. Normally, anybody that's been watching my content for long enough will know that I'm very comfortable in the world of Scotch whiskey. Then occasionally I'll step outside my comfort zone a little bit and explore Irish and world whiskies and things. But it's very rare that you'll hear me speaking about bourbon, and there's very good reason for that. That, you know, it took me a little while to get my head around bourbon. I, I struggled to find bourbons that I could really connect with. But it's like anything in whiskey, honestly, isn't it? You know, we when I first came to whiskey, I didn't really like heavily sherried whiskies, and I got to love them. I didn't like peated whiskies at first, but I engaged, and I got to love them. More recently, wine finishes and red wine matured whiskies, things like that, I've also started to enjoy. So it makes sense that with a similar investment in bourbon, I might start to really enjoy that too. There is quite a few that I've found to be really honestly fabulous but does it have to be expensive does it have to be high proof i've invited chad and sarah along from it's bourbon night to give us a little kind of a, a kind of walk through the bourbon landscape a, a bourbon 101 if you like and a bit later in the stream i'll be inviting chad and sarah into the stream to hang out with us and go through seven drams we'll need to drink small amounts i guess um, and i've managed to distribute locally through Sevi the alchemist I've managed to get some samples out to a couple of the guys that's going to join us tonight for a little game of It's a Space Site, so that they'll be dramming along with us and we'll get some interactivity from them in the chat as well. Anyway, I hope you're all very well. And uh, I'll jump into the chat to welcome some of the fabulous whiskey folk and dedicated barflies. Good to see so many of you. Wonderful stuff. Tom Arison, Tom Rhodes, you star. Good to see you out in, in, out in Chicago. Neil Cochran is here. He's also in the background waiting to pop in a wee bit later for a wee game of It's a Space Side. Jimmy Jazz is here. You star, Jimmy. I managed to hang out with you briefly last night, and it's good to welcome you in here. Greg's Whiskey Guide from France. Excellent, Greg. Wonderful to see you. Spirit Works Tom from down in Litchfield. You star. Uh, some of my community have been treating me this week. I don't want to dwell too much on it. I don't want to talk about it too much. But nevertheless, I want to say thank you to so many of you tonight. And I hope I get a chance. Billy Saunders is here as well, along with uh, Tom was treating me. Robot Scott is in. That looks like a new name. You're very welcome here. Good to see you, my friend. Helen Hellswood is here. Good to see you, Helen. Rucher Lax, Luna Aaron, Frank Rochford saying hello, everyone. Let me pause a second here while I see that name. I've got a little bit of a little bit of this dram. It's actually not an ideal starter dram. This is Kalila from a PX cask. Um, but it was here and I fancied it, so I went with it. I want to raise a wee glass and say a happy birthday to Frank Rochford. His other half, Ailsa, Ailsa Brown, reached out and said um, that his birthday was on the same day as mine. It was a couple of days ago. It's passed. Um, but this is the nearest V-pub that was going out. So I want to raise this wee glass and say many happy returns, Frank, originally hailing from Campbelltown. Um, he shares the same birthday as we, so many, many happy returns, my friend, and thank you for your support as well. I'll also say happy birthday to my good friend, the Whiskey Rev. Maybe he'll be dropping a wee bit later, but he usually lurks in the background if he is here. And also my cousin up in Aberdeen, Barry all sharing the same birthday as me. And my cousin, Kevin, from the whiskey ga the Scottish Gantry, uh, was out live on Facebook doing a whiskey quiz earlier tonight. So many birthdays around the same time. Happy birthday, everyone. Happy birthday, Frank. Nice to welcome you in here. Slant you back. Cheers. 
and that is the last of a gorgeous dram that was gifted to me by uh, Marcus Kreitner. Kilko Brian is here. Good to see you, Brian. Good to welcome you in, my friend. Menos Multimission is here. Superb. Eric Cunliffe. That's why I didn't want to dwell on it, Eric. <laughs> but thank you so much, my friend. I'm going to need to pour a wee dram. Actually, I'm just going to go straight into the first dram that we'll be sharing tonight. I poured a decent measure of it. This is the Eagle Rare. It's going to be the first of our flight tonight. Um, I'm familiar with this. I've managed to get through quite a lot of this. You'll see the bottle's almost finished. I have shared this quite a lot, but you can see I'm clearly enjoying some bourbons. Thank you, Eric Slanchova. Thank you very much. Wow. Dram Dude is here. So good to see you, Dram Dude. Kevin Grant is here. Thank you. Hopefully get to share some drams and a curry soon. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. I've been talking about that recently, the subject in recent times have been about how much we're missing people in that contact, unfortunately. Whiskey Journey saying that's a beautiful colour. Bourbons tend to be a beautiful colour. They're always very rich in copper and orange tones, aren't they? Ebhead Rolf is in from Norway. Great to see you, Rolf. He's saying, uh, great to be back at the pub. I've been absent for three V pubs in a row. Roy sent me a letter stating that if that happens again, it will have consequences. Not at all, Rolf. Absolutely not at all. There's so much whiskey content out there just now. I completely understand. There's just so many things to do. And I'm not just speaking about people creating content and going live and live streams and things. I'm speaking about uh, people coming together uh, um, on interactive meetings and virtual club meetups and all of these things. And we have to remember how much time that takes and the toll it takes on our health as well. We always have to be careful about how much whiskey time we have in a week. So listen, the VPUB is here when it fits around your life. And you can catch up on the replay if you've got the time. And if you have to skip a few, there will be no letters sent out to anybody. It's just great to see you and my friend. And I'm looking forward to when you and I can hook up together. I loved your contribution to a very amazing video that was put together for me this week. Thank you. James Bricker is here. He's bought me a dram saying, what was the first was the first of your Regal Air experiences in Texas? It absolutely was. I've never had a bourbon that smells like a tire fire in an old shoe. Happy birthday, Roy. <laughs> Um, I'll tell that story, James. Um, we were uh, we met at uh, Brad's semi-secret meeting in Texas, and it was before the first Bastards Ball. And uh, we were all in uh, kind of this quite small space at the bar in the back, and somebody brought out a sharing cup. It's a, a pewter quake, a Scottish kind of traditional Celtic sharing cup. And we filled it to the brim, right up to the brim. And the rule is you pass it around and you toast to everyone's health. If you spill any, you kind of pass it back against that again and that idea, just different kind of fun games. But we were passing it around and, and I was raising the, the, the quake and I was using the toast that there are no strangers in whiskey. And that was the toast that was going around the room. Just at the moment it got passed to the left, Chad and Sarah walked into the room and they were past this cup. And that was kind of their initial moment of seeing everybody in this bar at the back corner of the room, wondering what's going on and why they're being asked to drink bourbon from this bizarre pewter, this silver cup. Anyway, that was uh, a day. From then on, and none of us in that room um, have considered each other strangers, I'm very sure. Orange Will is here. Yeah, plenty of whiskey content out there just now. VPUB is still the place to be. That's a great comment for me to reach in and pick out Orange Will. Thank you so much. And congratulations on your recent performances in the quiz. I'm going to try and keep things quick tonight. <laughs> I know you're laughing at me when I say that. Um, but we've got a lot to get through and I don't want to keep up my guests and these seven drams waiting too long in the background. I want to say to everybody, remember... The Lockdown Whiskey Festival is Saturday, two days from now. Uh, they've invited me back. They're asking me back to host it again. So I'll be hosting it with you from two o'clock on Saturday. And we've got some fantastic uh, whiskies out there to share. We've got Old Pulteney. We've got Tamdu. We've got Glen Goyne. We've got a new distillery in Rassie. We've got World Whiskies in McMira and Blanton's. We've got independent bottlers from Douglas Lang and Boutique Whiskey. There's a great lineup of whiskies to enjoy and they're going to switch it up a bit they're going to bring the format down a bit more compact so it's an easier time to watch but there's still going to be a lot of whiskey sharing going on new segments in there as well and this one coming up on saturdays for a very very good cause is for maggie's the uh it's tomatin's partner charity in the highlands it's a cancer charity called maggie's um and there's going to be more to to hear about that on saturday as well 
charities in general are struggling right now, uh, as we all know, and uh, anything that we can do as a community and as, a, as an industry to get together um, to support it is uh, very, very welcome. Um, there will be ways for you to donate on Saturday. We'll share more about that at the time, but the prizes that the industry are putting up are fantastic. So please don't miss that. At least drop in and see if uh, there's a way for you to participate in all of that whiskey sharing that's going on on Saturday. Lockdown Whiskey Festival, it's not on my channel. I'm hosting it on the Tomatin channel. You need to head over to Tomatin, um, subscribe to their channel and set a reminder. I'm looking forward to welcoming you there and representing you, the community, in the festival as well. What other things have I got to talk about? Um, I want to be careful about this. There are some there are some gifts that I received this week that really knocked me on my back. They were incredible. And some of them I haven't cleared, but if it's okay to share uh, the gifts that have appeared. Um, but what I'm going to do is is do a kind of patron, Patreon uh, kind of relaxed, more intimate, easy paced thing to kind of share some of these, these whiskies that were given to me. Some of them are very, very special. Um, and I want to say thanks to everybody that, that that did that for me this week. There was a video put together as well by so many people in the community. I did suffer from mild allergies while I was watching it. I was really bowled over. It was amazing to witness. Um, and there was a gift that came from Angel's Share Glass. It was uh, spearheaded by Andy Arbaggy, I think. But he got loads and loads of the community together to share in this beautiful stave from Angel's Share Glass with a, a water jug and a little Glen Cairn and a dropper and uh, a wee personal message on there alongside the words, it's not whiskey till it's shared. You could have, I was tissue thin. I was so fragile. <laughs> and when I was receiving that uh, on my birthday this week, I was just absolutely blown away. You're beautiful, beautiful community. And as long as you guys are hanging out with me, I'll be here to host all of these things for you. It's, I always say it, and I know you're well tired of me saying it, but this is a privilege and I want to say, Thank you to all of you. More to follow on that. Um, so let's get started on this on our wee game segment. I really we're having a, a, a we're having fun doing this. I don't know how long it's going to last. I don't know how long it's going to stay fun. But while we're while we're doing it and we're having fun, eh, let's uh, let's keep it going. I've got the London Whiskey Club in standby. I've got some guys over in the states: uh, Leanne Rayner, Zach Andrews, eh, Mark Goins. Um, trying to remember who the the other the fourth person is. They're going to come in and join from the states. So there's, I'm filling up weeks ahead for content um, for people to come on and participate in this. So it's nice that we're able to do something that involves the community. I'm going to bring in some people from that's local to me tonight, kind of representing the Glasgow um, Barflies tonight. We've got uh, Kilted Moose isn't available. He was one of the first that I'd asked to come along, but he's not available tonight. But we'll get Scott back in in the future. And um, we've got Sevi the Alchemist. We've got Andy C over in East Kilbride. We've got Precarious Dave and we've got Neil Cochran. It'd be nicer for you to put faces to names that you've not met before. But talking about future VPUBs, I want to share with you a couple of things that were is just really locked in today. Uh, um, I reached out to Glen Allachie just to kind of find out if Billy Walker was interested in coming on a VPUB and, and sharing his vision for Glen Allachie and the idea that he's in, in, inherited a legacy of stock there. He's managed to put together very quickly a really solid core range of products with the, the spirit that he's inherited. He's putting a lot of production changes and management changes there as well. And so he's clearly got a vision for Glen Allachie going forward. And his audience, I feel, is us, the way he's presenting the product, the value, the price prospect. Billy's coming on, and we managed to nail it down today that it'll be next Thursday night VPUB. A week from tonight, we'll be able to welcome in uh, Billy Walker of, uh, well, I mean, he's known as a bit of a whiskey magician, a bit of a whiskey whisperer in general, and he's had a long career in whiskey. We obviously know that he's come from Ben Riak, where he was in charge of Ben Riak, Glen Glass and Glen Dronach, but he's now at the helm of what was a virtually unknown under the radar distillery um, from Pernod Ricard, but he has now bought that distillery and he's transforming it. I think that'll be a very interesting thing to bring you guys along and to get access directly to Billy to be able to ask him questions about the projects and the things that he's developing at Glenallachie. Then beyond that, 
I was gifted a bottle from, uh, you'll need to, it's over my shoulder here, this one here. This came from the community. This was a gift from the Nottingham Whiskey Association. So this was from, it would have been from, I've got the, the slip of paper here. It comes from, from Tom, Billy, James, Richard, Simon and Fraser. That's the Spirit Works Tom, Billy Saunders, uh, James Burgoyne, uh, Richard Hall, uh, Simon Ray and Fraser Bell, Whiskey Freedom. These guys are always in here, they're always part of uh, this community and chat, but they've, they live locally together down south and they've come together again from this chat, it's wonderful, and they've formed this club and they got together to buy me this really special bottle of Buna Haven Burgundy, it's a special release. And I think I would like to use that in an upcoming VPUB because I've invited the whiskey maker who created that whiskey and so many more under at Deanston, Bunahaven, Tobin Mori Lechik as well. That she, Julianne, she's still very young. I think she's in her early 30s. She's coming on board. She's come on board as the whiskey maker, the master blender actually for the Stell Group. And I've reached out to them to ask if we could uh, hear her story and what her tasks are, what kind of products she's going to be bringing to us from Distel, a distillery very close to a lot of our hearts. In fact, sorry, a producer very close to all of our hearts. We love Bunahaven, we love Deanston, we love Lechik, and uh, we love Tobin Mori as well. So we want to see what the future is from there. Where are they taking that ship? I hope you'll join me. That's in two weeks' time. So the VPUB is going to be pretty full going forward. Then the extended opening times will still be coming out on a Sunday night with no guests, no structure. You just me, I suppose, a bit more laid back time. But it's great uh, to have that participation. It's great to have that involvement in the community. I'm looking forward to sharing it all with you. Let's reach out to our Glaswegian friends. I'm going to reach out to Neil first. Um, and you can put a face to a name and we'll get a wee game of It's a Space Side. And we'll try and go through this as quickly as we've ever done it. Neil, how are you, my friend? Nervous. Very well, Roy. How are you? <laughs> uh, I'm hoping you're nervous. I'm very well. No, I'm, doing, I'm, doing, I'm doing really great. I need to put my phone on silent, actually. I've just realised not very professional. Are you comfortable, Neil? Yes? Um, as comfortable as you could expect under these circumstances. Okay. Well, you're, you're a friend of mine from the Glasgow Whiskey Club. I met you through the Glasgow Whiskey Club. You've been a long-term supporter of the channel, and you're very active in the chat every week. I thank you for that. But let me ask you, are you ready to play a wee game of It's a Space Side? Absolutely right. Are you asking or are you answering tonight? I'm asking tonight, Roy. Fantastic. What a fool thank I am. You so thank you, my friend. Thank you. I'm going to pick a bottle that I've uh, brought out uh, earlier. It's the only bottle on my desk. It's sitting here. And I'll, I'll, I'll say good luck, Neil. And please ask away. Ten questions. <coughs> Oh, and three minutes. Continue, just go right ahead. Is it space side, Roy? No. Is it an Iowa? No. Is it a Lowland? No. You're, you're sniping. Is it a Highland? Yes, it's a Highland meal. Um, is that a Highland that's south of Inverness? Yes. Nice question. Is it an east or west Highland that's south of Inverness? <laughs> um, let's let's suggest neither. I know that that's probably going to help you more than anything, isn't it? Let me let me have a wee look. Right. It's not going to be much in it, honestly. It's east of Inverness. There you go. Sorry, is it an is it is that an east? Or West Highland, sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, is, it, is it kind of east of Scotland or west? It's, it's central. I, I have to help you. It's kind of it's kind of central. <laughs> I thought you'd have picked up on that. Oh, I don't know how they uh, uh, sell. 
Edra Dower. Edra Dower, no. Blair Athol. Oh, wow, he's just shooting from it. It's not Blair Athol, no. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of thinking. <sighs> I'm going to help you out here. I'm going to help you out. Right. Inverness is fairly key. <laughs> it's central and it's in place. A long time ago, Inverness lost its uh, distilleries, Glenvor, Glen Alban, Melbourne. They all disappeared, all long closed. But these, this is yeah. you would have to say it could be considered one of the local to Inverness distilleries. I hope that helps you. <laughs> is it Royal Black? Nope. Oh, You're going to be so upset with yourself. Um, Eight seconds on the clock. It's south of Inverness, right? Yes. Um, Ord. It's not Ord. I'm going to give you one more guess. But you have to tell me the distillery oh, and the expression. Level. Tomatum. Yes. Uh, le legacy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, I, I, I almost spoon fed you that. See if the other guys don't get as easy a ride as that. They're going to be upset with me. Uh, well, then, you, know, you managed it in the end, so it's down to me to send a drama right. to whoever in the chat first said to Martin Legacy. You got there in the end, Neil. I, I, that was you really wrung it out. Didn't you? Thanks, my friend. Thanks so much for joining in. Oh, yeah, well, won't you stay in the background and join us for the quiz at the end? Won't you? Yes. Thanks, Roy. Thank you, my friend. Well yeah. done. Well done. Oh, you made hard work of that. Let's go over to East Kilbride now and ask, invite in Andy Calderwood. This will be the first time again, like Neil, anybody has ever probably put a face to name. I've managed to hang out with Andy a couple evening. of times. How are you, my friend? Good evening, Roy. Good evening. Good to see you. Wow, that was pretty stressful to watch, I imagine, right? He was. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to be doing the answering tonight, so a bit easier for me. Okay, pressure falls on me then. No problem at all. Great to welcome you in, Andy. It's nice to see you in a V-pub. Um, let's uh, let's just get this started, and let me ask you, Andy, is it a Speyside? It is, Roy. Oh, wow. Is it a Glen? It is not. It's not a Glen. Is it But is it one of the big four? That would be Grants, Edrington, Diageo, or Pernod Ricard? It is not. Okay, so smaller, Speyside distillery, and it's not a Glen. Uh, okay. We need to try, and this is when it gets tricky. Speyside is actually the trickiest region, I think. <laughs> I thought it might be a bit easy, but it, it might not be. Yeah, it might not be. Um, would you say, is it, is it one of the Dufton distilleries, one of the, the Dufton? No. Okay, it's not in Dufton. Is there an age statement? There is, yes. Oh, that's terrible. What a terrible question. Can I ask that again? Um, <laughs> is it 15 years or younger? It is, yes. Okay. So we're looking. It's not one of the big four. That wipes out most of them. Oh, let's see. Is it a Tom and Tell? No. Oh, dear. <laughs> I'm going to struggle. Is it family owned? No. So it's not Glenferric and it's not Glenfarclas. Oh, well, can't they, those are both Glen. I, I was going to say, I think you said already it wasn't a Glen. Yeah. So it's not Balvenie then and it's not Caninvi. But they're they're both they're both one of the big four I mentioned earlier as well. Okay. Uh, never started the timer for myself. Well, that's kind of handy, isn't it? <laughs> um, is it owned by Dewar's? 
You're not sure? As a sub company, yes. Is it Craig Ellis? Part of the same, no, it's part of the same family. Okay, I'd already asked, is it Craig Elliott? No. Okay, I'm on my last question. I'm going to come in. I'm just going to ask, is it... Struggling, struggling. Yeah, it's definitely Speyside, isn't it? Yes, I've double-checked. Who's the other one that's owned by Billy Walker's ex Cloud Glendronic? Is it Ben React 12? It is not, no. Oh, lost, 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 lost. You were very, very close. And it's 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 a large, but not one of the four. It's Bacardi, which is Dewar's. Dewar's, yes. And it's the furthest oh, northeast oh. point of Speyside. And I actually double checked because I've had this for ages and I wasn't sure it was Highland or Speyside, but I double checked. No, it's, it's definitely and Speyside. It's it's the, definitely the furthest, Speyside. most northeast point, I think, of what is Speyside. Do so. you know, it escaped me because I was going through the, the Dewar's uh, lineup yeah. in my head. I was going, Royal Black, Brackland, oh, it can't be that. Aberfeldia, Highland, it can't be that. I was going through the other ones. Um, Craig Elliott and Altmore are the two Bacardi, big Bacardis. Yeah. yeah, so I'd mentioned Craig Elliott. Altmore escaped me. You've beaten me tonight, big guy. That's me lost yep. two for two cool. tonight. Well done. Well done, Andy. Thanks so much. Cheers. Stay around for the, till the end, won't you, my friend? Will do. Thank Thanks, you, Roy. buddy. Happy well birthday. Done. Damn, so anybody that's picked Altmore, Altmore 12, is getting another prize, either a coin or a drum from me. Well done. Let's reach out to Sevy the Alchemist, pull him in quickly. Sevi, how are you, my friend? Thank you so much for running meal for me this, today. No problem, Roy. No problem. How are you? Happy I'm birthday. Very, very well. Uh, just to mention that three of the folk in the chat tonight, Sevi, um, Neil, and uh, Dave, all have the exact same flight of seven drams that we're going to be sharing when we get chat Chad, Chad and Sarah in in a, in a little minute. Um, so I hope you're enjoying your bourbon. I know you're a bourbon fan, Sevi, yes? I'm um, indeed. I'm, uh, I'm just having a little bit of this Eagle Rare 10. Uh, Love to start with that. It's very, very nice. Great. Tasty start already, Great. isn't it? Very, very good. But of course, this has got nothing to do with bourbon, buddy. Are you asking or answering? Well, are you dancing? That's the question. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm asking. Uh, mostly because uh, if I if I was to if you were to ask me, I would probably not know half the answers. So uh, I think this is easier to do it this way. <laughs> okay, let's pull in a bottle. I've got a bottle up here. Core range product. Scotch malt whiskey. Ask away, my friend. Good luck. Okay, thanks very much. Okay, I'm going to go for a few slightly weirder questions here. So, uh, well, I'll start with some easy ones. Uh, is it a Glen? It is a Glen. Ooh. Uh, well ooh okay. Um, that's actually taken out about four of my other questions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is it a teenager? Um, no. Ooh, that means it could be NES. But might be a Good question. Is it a teenager? I like it. Okay. Uh, it could also be a 12, I suppose. Uh, right. I've already got rid of that. Um, does the distillery have a worm tub or use worm tubs? No. Wow. What questions? Okay. Um... Right. Okay. Now I'm. I'm. I've actually. That was all my my special questions. That. <laughs> um. I guess. So it's a Glen. Okay. Um. But I've got to ask. Is it a space side? <laughs> I was waiting for it. Yes, it's a space side. Okay. 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 Right. Um. Is it? I'm going to use one of these. Is it east of Inverness? Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to go too much quickly to my map. <laughs> um, is that a Glendronach? Nope. 
It's, but it's definitely a space side. Glendronach's oh, Eastern yeah. Highlands. Sometimes oh, it's yeah. in some books it's, it's listed as a space side, but that was my uh, that was my kind of because that's why I was testing the, the depends on the season. reference book you're using, but the identity <laughs> is, that is an Eastern Highland now. Right. But it's definitely um, this one I have here is definitely a space side, buddy. Ooh, um, Eastern Highland. Is it a Glen Elgin? Ooh, no. Uh, Oh dear. Five seconds on the clock. Oh, okay. I'm going to have to start a. Oh, you're good. Plenty of time. I'm trying to think now. Um, is it owned by Diageo? No. Um, is it owned by Grants? Yes. Oh. Is it a Glenfiddich 12? You get, <laughs> you get. Is this three for none tonight? That's amazing. You were nowhere, and then <laughs> questions you pull a. That's a sniper. That's that's amazing. There you go. There Absolutely you go. amazing. But I would love to say that that was scientific uh, it kind of power of exclusion, but uh, it was more rabbit out of a hat. <laughs> yeah, I have to. I, I think Lady Luck is with you tonight, my friend. Yeah. Uh, well done. You yeah. snatched victory from the jaws of defeat right enough. Well done, Sevy. Stay around till then, won't you, my friend? I will indeed. I'm enjoying some of this bourbon. Thank you, buddy. See you soon. Yes, thanks. And finally, we've got our friend from uh, the west of Glasgow, Dave Precarious. Dave, welcome in, my friend. First time to welcome you in a V-pub. Hi there, Roy. It's a pleasure to have you in, buddy. How are you? Well? I'm fine, yep, yep. Good, good. Are you ready for a wee game of Is It a Space Side? Well, you'll be pleased to know that even though it's 3 nil at the moment, it'll soon be 1-3. Oh, I'm not so sure. I don't feel like it's just maybe not my night tonight, buddy. It's not my night. Does that mean, are you asking or answering? I'm asking. Well, you're asking? Yep. Wonderful. Is that okay? Have you got a bottle? I have a bottle here. Let's see. Oh, let's pick this guy here. Okay. What should we do? What should if that's we do? not from Isla, Roy, put it back and get another one. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see. Listen, good okay. luck, my friend, and thanks for asking. It takes the pressure off me a wee bit. I'll, uh, no put, I'll start the timer at three minutes, and I'll uh, ask you to ask away. Okay. You ready? Yes. I'm going to ask, is it peated? Yes. That's fantastic. That's a great start. It really is. Is it from Isla? No. Okay. Uh, Another is it from, uh, and let's just think about that. Is it from the mainland? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking Ardmore, Anok. Uh, any clues? In oh, yeah, some uh, Glen Scotia or, or Campbelltown. <laughs> uh, You're checking your cheat sheet. Good for you. No, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud. Actually, uh, yeah. I think I will ask: Is it a Campbelltown? That that will narrow that down. No, it is not. It isn't. So I'm thinking Ardmore. Oh, no. uh, is it an aged statement whiskey? It's non-aged statement. Non age statement. So it could be, it could be Pete Hart from Anok. Five questions to go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a go with a, with a rifle. Is it, is it Pete Hart from Anok? Great guess. It's not. Oh. Okay. Need some help from the community. No, it's not, it's not an island, so it can't be Talisker. Uh, oh yeah, it could be, it could be our more legacy. That's a good one. Or okay. it could be a uh, Balakin. I know that one's peated. Oh, dear. I'm in trouble. I'm going to have to go geographic. No, I think I'll just carry on sniping because I don't know very many peated mainland ones. <laughs> carry on, yeah. <laughs> I might go for uh, uh, Balakin tends to be a statement. What about an Ardmore Legacy? Ardmore Legacy. No. Boom. Oh, Wow. <laughs> Oh, thank you for choosing a peated one. That helped enormously. <laughs> I went for three low-cost, budget, cheap, easy-to-get whiskies tonight. 
that was the theme. I hope I was hoping it would help people out a wee bit. I don't know if anybody even caught and on to it. The only well, I've got the community because it came up on the side there. Another one. It would have been Virgin Oak, the Eastern Virgin okay, Oak. We'd never have got that one. So, um, it, but it was all kind of low cost, entry level product. And um, well done, Dave. I'm beating tonight four for zero. That's okay. Last week I was I was four to the good and didn't lose any, and this time I've lost all four. <laughs> uh, I, I'll hate you forevermore. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're going to hang around to the end, aren't you, my friend? <laughs> I am indeed. Wonderful stuff. Well done. Cheers. I have to sneak, go off and just into a corner and lick my is it a space side wounds for a little bit. Listen, that's what it's all about. It's all about a wee bit of fun. And uh, all the prizes are on my shoulders tonight. So if you answered any of those whiskies first, you've won yourself a prize. Uh, listen, the, the moderators have been fabulous. Big thanks out to uh, Alistair Gray in particular, who's sending me wee messages right afterwards, keeping me straight on all the people that won the, the, the prizes. Um, I'm waiting for a, an address, a contact point for one or two of you, but I'll reach out. Um, I know what it's like. Believe me, I'm behind. I'm so behind on so many emails and messages myself. Um, we'll get that caught up. And uh, don't worry, the whiskey keeps and the coins keep too. Thanks to everybody for, for participating in it. I hope that you're still having a bit of fun. But let's get on to my guests who are patiently uh, waiting in the background. I couldn't... Um, I mentioned at the intro that, uh, you know, it'd been a long time before I actually connected with bourbon. And when I started to connect with bourbon, it was probably about two, two and a half years ago, maybe a bit longer. And I tried some higher proof bourbons, the Jack Daniels uh, single barrel barrel strength, I think it is, or barrel proof. Um, wonderful stuff. Elijah Craig barrel proof at the hands of the Scotch Test Dummies. I managed to get a bottle of that as well. And it really realigned all of what I saw in the bourbon landscape. It made me taste bourbon in a different way. And isn't it like that? Isn't it, you know, as soon as you start, it only needs one gateway thing to kind of let you realize that whiskey's in control. All it needs is for you to be open-minded, um, for you to be able to explore whole new landscapes and whole new um, areas of whiskey. So a couple of years ago when I met Chad and Sarah over in Texas, I, I, we talked about a collaboration. Maybe I'd come onto their show and do a bit of a Scotch thing, or they come onto my show and do a bourbon thing because... There's a huge overlap in the community, of course there is. There is the bourbon group and the scotch group and various other groups, but there's a huge overlap as well. We always thought that would be fun. And I don't know why we just never, ever got around to arranging it, but I'm very glad that it's happening tonight. I'm going to reach out to the gorgeous couple. And I have to say, before I embarrass them, I'll bring them on and say, I've met these people in real life. If anything, they are much, much, much nicer in real life than all that nicest they display on camera. They're amazing. Hello, Chad and Sarah. Hello. Oh, God. How are you? Yeah, <laughs> don't look, stop, but stop. <laughs> and look at the t-shirt you're wearing too. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Mine. Yeah, I'm, wearing, I'm wearing a Knits Bourbon Night t-shirt as well. I, I can't oh, actually really remember are. you giving me this. Mate, mine, I don't... Um, uh, I've kind of suffered from the quarantine 15, so mine's a little tight. <laughs> so I'm wearing Chad. Uh, my Aqua Vitae shirt, yeah. Because I'm also having the same problem. <laughs> Listen, we have to forgive ourselves these things. Needs right. must, needs must, right? It's special times. Mm -hmm. I am grazing, and I don't normally graze, but I find myself just passing the fridge and just going in, and yes, it's like yeah. that. <laughs> and I think that's okay because you can condition. Well, I think we have to be careful with our relationship with alcohol right now, though, right? Because it's just it's too easy. We're not driving anywhere. We're sure. not necessarily going into work or the office and things. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah. For me, age is keeping me in check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How, are, how are you both? As I get older, I'm like, wow, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> It's yeah. true. Now yeah. I'm down no. to the count for two days, not just no, one. That's, that's, that's absolutely true. And it's not even, I mean, I think that my stamina, my, my ability to enjoy a drink is still very much there. The recovery is not there. Absolutely. Yeah. That's I'm, it. I'm, I'm like, I know that I've had this much before and I was fine. But now it's just <laughs> like, no, we've, so we've got to dial it back. We've got to. Yeah. But that's uh, it's just it's just trying to find balance, mm -hmm. and balance is one elusive thing in life. I have to tell you, Hellswood Helen has just bought me a dram saying, "Slancheroy, you're spoiling us with all these great upcoming V pubs and many happy returns." Helen and Andy, Slancha Helen and Andy, thank you very much for your generous dram. Cheers. Mm. 
Now, I don't know why we didn't get this sorted before now. It's taken a while, hasn't it? I think we're, uh, yeah, we've just been constantly and consistently suffering from that uh, overwhelming inbox and and just, uh, you know, we always think, oh, we'll get to that soon. We'll get to that soon. And I don't think you realize how fast time is passing until, mm -hmm. you know, right now, I think we're really starting to slow down mm -hmm. and feel like we can get a hold of things. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And it is, it's a, it's a huge time management thing, but you can only manage time if you've got some. Yeah. <laughs> so when it's, when the time disappears and I'm teaching kids at home just now, so trying to put your head in the headspace where you can actually reply and concentrate on messages and connect up the dots and yeah. work out who that person is against their username on YouTube and all of the fantastic challenges that we have. Mm -hmm. You need to be focused and in a, in a quiet room. And when there's yeah. three kids constantly asking for attention and help with various tech and <laughs> honestly, the lessons that I long forgotten is tricky. But yeah. tonight, that's very much on theme, isn't it? There's going to be lessons tonight and, and I'm very much your pupil. I hope that that's okay. But not just for me. I mean, the idea is, is that you're, I think the majority of my audience is very scotch centric. There we go. That's a good way to put it. It's not that they're, they yeah. don't want to try other whiskeys. I would say so. Cause I was kind of hanging out in the chat, you know, two, three hours ago. It seemed like, like uh, us, you get people filtering into your chat kind of early. So I was yeah. watching periodically and saw a lot of comments like, you know, because your title is, is bourbon better than scotch? People will be saying, nope. nope. <laughs> be like, well, yeah. that's the episode. <laughs> and I'm like, oh boy. Do you know what? And I, I said, I, I wrote in the description and I wrote a, when I when I put it out on Twitter and things, I said, look, this is clickbaity to put that title there. But I think that whiskey, because it's whiskey, I don't, whether we're talking about bourbon or American whiskey or whatever, or scotch, Irish, world whiskeys, it's whiskey. Mm -hmm. Whiskey teaches us not to close our minds. How many right. times have you said, I don't like, only to discover that it's just that you've not learned how to like yet? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think it's funny because I think we're getting the flip side of our, like the coin with our channel. Um, Cause we get, you know, a lot of just strict bourbon and American rye drinkers. Um, and so it's interesting. Uh, and we kind of like what you were talking about when you first started this episode of just not having dabbled in bourbon much. And, and we're the op, you know, the exact opposite because we're from Kentucky where bourbon comes from. We just haven't, we haven't made it through all the bourbon yet, and so we haven't dabbled in scotch much. Although we have picked up in the past year. We, we have, and a lot mm -hmm. of that is thanks to our community, you know, giving us samples or like, hey, you should try this. I think you would like this. Yeah. A lot of things that were finished in ex-bourbon casks and, mm -hmm. and so forth. And we have been yeah. finding, you know, some things, but largely in part to our audience. Right. So thank yes. you. Yes. And I know that when you and I talked about a collaboration going back to last year, early last year, maybe even the year before, that was initially the idea. But I think when I worked out that there was such a, a crowd of people that were keen to see you react to certain scotches and things, mm -hmm. I realized that maybe I would have to come up with something that had a better angle than that. Mm -hmm. um, I've, got a, I've got a super chat in from Graham Young. Thank you, my friends. He's saying Graham Young up in Canada. Uh, he's on front line. He's in he's in, in medicine, of course. Caught my uh, two faves together from work with uh, PM. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Graham. Thank you. James Bricker as well said, I need some cowbell. Love the bourbon, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, James. We've oh, obviously no. had a chance to meet I wanted, well. to no, get I wanted to stand up anyway. I oh, usually... cowbell, of course. Yes. Yeah. And oh, uh, Brian God. Brennicke as well is going to be looking for some of that as well. It's not about one better than the other. It's about folks who put uh, so much in the craft of making any whiskey and the friends we enjoy their craft with. Cheers and happy birthday, Roy. Brian, thank you so much, wow. my friend. I'll raise this wee glass of Eagle Rare. Is this the cowbell? Do you yeah. have it? That was well said. Yes, yes, from Brian, absolutely. And so for, for all of your super chats, plus for your birthday the other day, Roy. A cowbell yeah. cheers. Happy belated birthday. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Slanche. Slanche. Mm -mm -mm. So are you so, having the eagle rare? I'm sorry. I'm I wanted to keep up, but I think I'm mixed up. I'm mean, gonna make sure that what you're having. You are yeah. in the eagle rare. Okay. Yes, this is I'm gonna I poured a big measure. I've managed to get through it. And <laughs> I, I have to be mindful because as we go through this flight tonight, the proof ramps up. Yep. It really ramps up. So I'll just pour a wee bit more of this because I want to talk about, this was a gift to me from the community as well. 
And there's two or three people in my mind that I think this has come from. Everyone, every other one that's a gift here tonight, I remember who it's from. But this was, I was handed this, I think, when I didn't have a pen or anything to write mm -hmm. on a bottle. Or, it's so difficult. So whoever's gifted me this, um, I'll say thank you, thank you so much. If you're here tonight, call me out by all means. <laughs> but you can see, I hope you see how much I've enjoyed it. This is yeah. a single barrel select. It's uh, for vine and table, actually. Mm -hmm. But am I right in saying that all... Is all Eagle Rare sing? Uh, it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at one time, Eagle Rare was just a single barrel. Uh, it started to become so popular that it's it's no longer. Harlan Wheatley, who's the master distiller of Buffalo Trace, where this comes from, he has said that you can occasionally get a bottle that is legitimately a single barrel just because it met that profile and didn't need to be blended into any type of batch. Mm -hmm. But there'll never be any type of markings on the bottle to tell you that. Got yeah. you. Got yeah. you. The, uh, and that's that's obviously them just trying to keep up and chasing some yeah. efficiencies, I think, probably, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. So I think in that way, you do get some more variance uh, with this bottle. Like, they're going for a certain profile, but I think it's got a little more flexibility than, say, um, your average, like, small batch or something. Because, like Chad said, it can be a blend of two barrels. It can be a single. It could be ten. Like, we just don't know. Yeah. Um, bottle to bottle. Uh, well, I haven't, you know, honestly, it's been a couple months since I've had some Eagle Rare and I'm getting more of an earthy note than I remember. And I think you mentioned before a little bit of cherry. Yeah, of course, Roy, yours being a pick, being an actual single barrel, I'm, you know, I'm sure that's going to vary a little bit. But um, no, the, uh, the, the only two notes I had to share with you just just from enjoying it tonight was cherry Oh, okay. Strong cherry, and there's a boiled sweet that we have in the UK that's based on cherry. It's a medis medicinal sweet called uh, it's tunes. Um, so that's what it's coming. But I've also got a really soft cinnamon and a, like a, a like a pencil case sandalwood type note as well. Hmm. But what I think what's interesting is is you when you talk about that that batch variance because this is the thing that's that's kind of most people that come to bourbon or most people that are cynical about bourbon, let's say. Let, let me throw this out here because we're going to walk through a bourbon 101. Mm -hmm. But the gambit is that scotch, because of the refill barrels and, you know, the, we've got much, it's not, we're not as tightly restricted in terms of the maturation vessel mm -hmm. in scotch. So we can put it in a wine casks, we can put it in European oak or American oak. It can be first fill, virgin uh, refill, whatever it may be. So we talk about um, that mixed with the different peating levels and the way that scotch is made. In, the, in, in Scotland, that the variation is much wider. So mm -hmm. the, the bandwidth of variation and flavour is much wider, whereas bourbon is much more restricted. It's a much more specific style of whiskey. But I have found with every style of whiskey that I've ever ventured into and spent any time with, the more time you spend with it, the more variation appears. Has that happened with you in bourbon? Uh, definitely. I think it is... Um you know, a product of just having your palate become more accustomed to different flavors over time. And I think as bourbon has become more popular that, you know, Scott has sort of, Scotch has sort of a, a regional difference, right? And I think that we're starting to see a little bit of that in bourbon, oh, yeah. like for example, which I'm sure you know, um, Texas. you know, we can test this bourbon <laughs> is a very different yeah. flavor profile than, you know, Kentucky bourbon. And it is a climate thing. Um, yeah. So I think from there's kind of multiple angles that you could take into that. I think that there is starting to be. And to take different. it even more granular than that, what you mentioned there, what got me off on that tangent was the batch variation when you talked about, obviously, uh, the single barrel editions and what Eagle Rare are doing. Do, can you see uh, from bottle to bottle, can you feel the differences? Can you taste the differences yourself? <sighs> yes, I, me. <laughs> well, yes. I was going to say maybe less so than some other distilleries. I think Buffalo Trace is pretty, they run a pretty tight ship, you know? Mm -hmm. um, there's other distilleries, and I'm specifically thinking of some non-distilling producers, which right there is, is I think, the crux of it all, where we have noticed vast differences bottle to bottle. Now, mm -hmm. it, it may be a year, sometimes two years in between a bottle, because when you have a huge whiskey collection, if it's yeah. unless it's your favorite bourbon, you know, you're not draining it and getting a new bottle real real quick. But even just a year to two in between to notice a night and day difference in some wow. distilleries 
is crazy. Buffalo Trace, I do think, is more consistent. Yeah. I think the bigger distilleries in Kentucky. Oh, so are. that's so that's got so much to do with depths of stock, then, isn't it? And probably yeah. control over that stock as well. And also probably the volume of the batch. Sure. Yeah. But I do think like an example like Booker's, who does multiple releases a year, um, or Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, you know, they're keeping the same somewhat of the same profile yeah. each time, but there is definitely a difference and you can develop, you know, there's definitely favorites amongst those and you can oh, taste yeah. the difference between those batches. So mm -hmm. I think a little bit of that again is just, you know, going for slightly different profiles, but I think your as your palate evolves in tasting bourbon, you will be able to pick out. I think we're all in the same, whether it's scotch or bourbon, we're after variation, we're after new experiences and new flavors. We quite embrace the batch variation. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think if it's a, a kind of more staple product that people do drain and replace and drain and replace, that's where consistency becomes more crucial, probably. Scotch and bourbon the same. I'm just going to mention to Matt, Whiskey Crusaders, you starry's bought me a dram, two of my favorite channels together, Happy Belated Birthday Boy. I love scotch and bourbon, plus many other world whiskies. Matt, you are absolutely um uh, any whiskey is welcome at your table. I know that. Yeah, for sure. yeah, Matt's definitely been one of our, uh, I would call him like our, our Scotch spirit, our spirit guide, literally. Um, he's the one who will reach out and be like, Hey, I have a couple of scotches. These seem like they're more up your alley versus, you know, people a lot mm. early on. People would just be like, try Ardbeg. I want to see your face. Um, <laughs> and Matt's more of like, no, I have a feel for your palate. You need to go this direction. Yeah. Uh, which has been like the majority of the ones that I think that we found that we're more open to. Mm -hmm. Good for you, Matt. Good for you. Yeah. You Scotch evangelist, you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm in more indebted than I ever thought I was. Craig Duff, my brother, has joined. Uh, he's in tonight and he's joined the Aquavitae Barflies. Welcome in, Craig. Good to have you, buddy. Um, I've also got a dram bought for me by uh, you star Alan McLaughlin. He's saying, sorry, I have to go. Busy week, birthdays. I've got family wanting to FaceTime. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> for me tomorrow. Hope you had a great birthday, Roy. Uh, and hi to Chad and Sarah. I'll watch the rest on replay. It's fantastic to have you in, Alan. Thanks for joining and leaving me a wee dram before you go, my friend. Wonderful stuff. Also, uh, the SoCal or Southern Californian dram tram. Well, I wasn't planning on drinking today because it's so hot here, but dry week starts <laughs> tomorrow. So let's do this. Yeah, <laughs> Cheers exactly. to you, Roy, Chad and Sarah. <laughs> Sure. Cheers, boys. That's uh, Cesar, I think, and Matt down in yeah. Southern California. Thanks to everybody for your generous drams. Another one drops in from <laughs> another two drop in. Sorry, Espen Anderson um, over in Norway. Congratulations on the day, Roy. Thank you very much. It was a couple of days ago, uh, Espen. Thank you so much. And Chris Malloy, uh, vast is the difference between Octomore and Aberfeldy. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Chris. Thanks to everybody for your drams. If you, if you say so. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, but of course, those two things, uh, Aberfeldy is a very honeyed, sweet, easy Highlander, and Octomore trades heavily on its variation and its boldness, its mm -hmm. active casks, and its heavy, heavy peat. Um, very, very smoky, um, very, very high levels of uh, peat in the malt before it goes through distillation. So, but that's exactly what they're doing. They're preaching to a very niche, select crowd of whiskey yeah. drinkers. And yeah. it's very expensive. It's 100, 125, 150, 200 pounds plus for yeah. five year old expressions and very small batch. So very extreme uh, styles. So if, we, if we're going to go through a kind of 101 here, we've started with Eagle Rare. What is Eagle Rare? We've talked about it being, it used to be single barrel. It's still a 10 year old, I believe. But yeah. what is this? What's the mash bill for this? What, where, who owns Eagle Rare? Well, this is Buffalo Trace. Um, it's mash bill number one. They have three mash bills. They have mash bill number one, which is their lower rye. Mash bill number two, which is their higher rye, even though it's still not that high. Not super high. And then they have, uh, well, I'm sorry, they have four. They have their weeded mash bill, which substitutes the rye for wheat. And then they have their actual rye mash bill. So four, four total there. Um, but yeah, this... This did used to have a, a age statement here on the neck tag that said 10 years. And a lot of people think that it's no longer 10 years, but it's actually on the back of the bottle. Yeah, it's here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. You have it down there now. Now, I wonder personally if that is a move, you know, a midterm move to eventually take that away without, you know, to just gradually like ease you into the taking away of that. Ah. I'm not saying that it is. I actually haven't heard that at all. That is totally speculation. Like another... Uh, 
to, I'm just going to use the term tonight since we're on Aquavite. Uh, another dram that we're going to have later tonight um, did the same thing. Moved it to the back, then moved it completely off. I think that's a... More on that later. Yeah. A way yeah. to kind of... Uh, I think I know the one that you're talking about. Yeah. There's another... There's a, there's a dram, that, there's an expression that we have in Scotland as well uh, called Glenfarclas 105. Um and Glenfarclas 105 is uh, trying to recall a very old style of whiskey. And it once upon a time, it used to have a 10-year a age statement, and then it disappeared, and then it came back, and then it disappeared. And honestly, the, the, the producer there have, have been very honest and said, look, we try to make it that age statement, but in order to bring the whiskey in the volume that the market demands and in the style that it's come to be expected of it, sometimes we won't make 10 years. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's what it's about. So maybe longer term, they'll just remove the age statement from it altogether. Yeah. But what I, they're doing is they're vatting together a product to make that proof that 105 is 60% mm -hmm. ABV. Um, so so they're, they're kind of constricted by lots of things. And sometimes the age statement made it, and sometimes it didn't. Um, I might struggle to pick up all uh, the Super Chats tonight, um, but I just uh, quickly I'll say thanks to, very much to Glenn Anderson. Say hello, hard on inventory those days. Hi from Norway. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you so much. So this this is, um, I know what bourbon you're going to talk about where that happened, where the age statement slipped off, but you're saying that this does have rye. There is a soft spice here. Mm -hmm. Could that yeah. be the rye element? Yeah, it's a 10% or less um, yeah. low rye. Okay, so it's very low. Very low, but that it, but it is there. Um, but for contrast, the, their higher rye is only between 12 and 15%, so not, okay. a, not, a, whole not a whole lot. Yeah, but yeah. Um, you, know, you may be familiar with other Buffalo Trace products of this mash bill. Uh, Stag mm -hmm. is in this. The E.H. Taylors are this mash bill. Buffalo Trace. Buffalo Trace. Benchmark. Uh, um, Old Charter? Old Charter, yeah. I've mm -hmm. got a complaint about Buffalo Trace. <gasps> Let's hear yeah. it. The standard, I didn't make it. <laughs> and by the way, we suffer from this in Scotch as well. It's not exclusive to Buffalo Trace. I can go and buy Buffalo Trace off the shelf in my supermarket. It's widely available, and honestly, it's always a very good price. But in the UK, it's eighty proof, forty percent ABV. Oh, mm. honestly, no. you sip it in contrast with anything else, and you can taste the water. Yeah. It's so thin. It's all that. Now, I, I was sipping it alongside a 45% Maker's Mark. It was the same price, the exact same price. I bought them at the same time. I'm, I'm sipping them side by side. And the extra mouthfeel, the extra grip, and, and you know, from the perspective of a sipper that the Maker's Mark had over the Buffalo Trace made it a completely different drink. Now, the Buffalo Trace was great as a mixer then, but it's rendered a mixer suddenly by its low ABV, whereas the, the Maker's Mark could be either or. You could enjoy it as a sipper as well. That doesn't happen in the States. You guys have it higher, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's 90. 90. 90 proof here, mm -hmm. um, which I don't know why that happens. I think there's a similar case with um, some... Australia? Australia, yeah, that, that things that are... They'll be like... You know, we have two friends that live over there, and and they'll be like, "Why is this eighty proof here?" And it's and it's not in the U.S. Uh, I have no idea. Well, I think um, they I get taxed. I don't know about over there, proof? but yeah, I know in Australia they're taxed on proof. So I don't know if it's the same where you guys are. Or not. Yeah. No, it shouldn't be. I mean, what what traditionally happened is that the domestic KPV was forty, and that's a legacy thing. Blends and mm -hmm. um, way back the original malt whiskies as well would have been and. I'm generalizing, but 40%. But export strength tended to be a little bit higher, 43. Mm -hmm. um, but I was struck by that, and I remember reviewing a, a Buffalo Trace at 40% and complaining about that. And I got lots of comments saying, no, you made a mistake. It's 45, it's 45. But clearly here it's 40. It's, it's a shame. But this is 45, and yeah. it, it's a great starter for this flight tonight. Are, yeah. we ready? Are we ready to move on to Dram 2? I'm ready. Sure, yeah. I was just going to say, this is kind of like, the big brother of Buffalo Trace because they are stateside anyway, both 90 proof and same mash bill. And this one is 10 year, whereas Buffalo Trace is not H stated, but it's usually, they say a blend between seven and nine year. Yeah. So this is just kind of the bigger brother for about $8 more here. <laughs> yeah. And it just, as we're on the Buffalo Trace topic, just as a silly little anecdote, the first time I was in Texas, when they had the allocated stock and the, the spirit stores that we were going in to look at what they had, mm -hmm. 
some of the product that they had behind the counter that was being sold one bottle per customer was Buffalo Trace. <laughs> I've seen that here too. Yeah. And with Eagle Rare. It's oh, crazy. Yeah. For sure, yeah Eagle Rare. It, there was a year where you couldn't find Eagle Rare for like three months and then all of a sudden it was back. I think that they just have allocation, you know, strict allocations and some supply and demand issue, obviously with their higher, you know, profile stuff, but it's even started to come down to just, you know, well, or special reserve, we all know, but it started to trickle down also to the Eagle Rare and even Buffalo Trace sometimes. Yeah. I've seen places, even Ancient Age, which is also a Buffalo Trace brand, um, being allocated, which is insane, but I mean, Lean I guess the but that's, a, I can, that's a marker of the boom that you guys are experiencing in bourbon yeah. right now. Okay, yeah, it's it's incredible that even the things that would have been considered staples mm -hmm. suddenly dry up and are mm -hmm. difficult to get a hold of. I, I think we're, we're opening this together now, and I want to give a shout out to my friend and long term supporter, Dwayne Dwayne Large. Everybody knows Dwayne. I call him Sir Dwayne now. Um, he's a great guy, and he gifted me this um, uh, this uh, small batch Elijah Craig from his own personal stash. Um, and I think it was, there was a store pick or, or a single barrel element of this, I'm not sure, but it said it's hand-selected and bottled, again by Vine and Table, which suggests that that Eagle Rare could be from also from Dwayne. He was one of my uh, suspects. A clue. <laughs> yes, the vine and table thing right up there in Indianapolis, actually. So that's uh, the one that you have is is also a pick. We just have the regular uh, off the shelf Eagle Rare, or uh, <laughs> Elijah Craig. <laughs> what are we on? What are we what, what, Chad, it's only the second one. <laughs> Get a hold of yourself. And I, look at what I've done. I've, I've made a mistake of go, uh, pouring a fairly generous one for my second yeah. one as well. Uh, about like ours, Maybe yeah. Just, yeah. I think I'm greedier, but I'll, <laughs> I'll to be careful. So let's let's uh, take me through this. What, what what's the contrast between this and the Eagle Rare we've just had? Well, it's a little higher proof. Yeah, ninety four. Ninety four. Um, but I think this one punches a little bit above its weight class. I agree. It seems to have just a little bit more punch to it. Um, I can't recall at the top of my head what this what this mash bill is. I also cannot. So um, maybe someone in the chat will generously help us out. Um, but it's Heaven is, Hill. It's it's Heaven Hill. Trade. If you know anything about me, you know I love Heaven Hill products. Um, I get a bit more brightness and floral on the nose of this one versus um, the, like that earthy cherry oh. note that I was getting on the Buffalo Trace. Now, I don't know yeah. what you're getting, obviously, because yours is a pick. Um, well, it's fresher, definitely. So mm -hmm. I'm getting a little bit of a kind of almost eucalyptus note. So still yeah. in, a, in a kind of medical confectionery or medicinal confectionery theme. But to me, there's also a huge sawmill element here. This is very kind of, a, there is a, a woody element to me that jumps out that we probably don't get often in scotch. Very, mm. uh, I mentioned the sandalwood element on the, the, uh, on the, the, the Eagle Rare, but for this, it's, it's so it's interesting very, to me that you just this is almost dusty wood. It's like a sauna. Yeah, I get that. Um, it's really interesting to me that you describe it as like a bit of a medicinal because I'm super like anti anti medicinal, medicinal you know, <laughs> too much eucalyptus or minty or especially like a licorice cherry, you know, that type of flavor is a turnoff to me because it reminds me of cough syrup. Um, right. and I really hate licorice also. Um, and so it's, I don't get any of that at all, but I think it's just interesting how, you know, we've both yeah. trained our, our senses so differently, um, that you're picking up on that. Okay. Well, I'm surprised immediately. I'm surprised. The palette is completely different. Mm. Oh, sure. It's a big surprise. Yeah. I don't do this very often. If I have a bourbon, it tends to be in isolation to sip, to sip in, in, in contrast like this and to get that impact. That's nice. Would you say it's a positive or a negative? <laughs> Very positive, but it's not yeah. to take anything away from the Eagle Rare. Sure. The Eagle Rare was like a was like a richer, kind of redder, sweeter thing. Yeah. Um, more kind of yeah, sweet. This is suddenly this has got some some nice effervescence and texture and uh a bit more kind of grip around the palate. It's brighter, as you say. The confectionery note is there, and it's medicinal confectionery, but it's it's dependent on our geography, I think, and our references that we build up. Mm -hmm. I don't have negative uh, con When I was given uh, sweets as medicine when I was young, that was a super positive thing over the medicine. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so, 
So I, I enjoy those flavours and when I find them in whiskey, definitely. I'll just say thank you to Werner, or Warner, sorry, the one glass man. Thank you so much. And he's saying, wonderful to see you guys together. Um, and he's saying that his birthday was the day prior to mine. Many belated happy returns, Warner. It's just the most popular bourbon couple um, as well, please. Absolutely. <laughs> and Graham Horner has bought a dram to say happy belated birthday, Roy. Two of my favourite channels, Scotch and Irish Hold My Heart, though bourbon does creep in every now and again. Good for you, Graham. Thank you all so much. Thank you. So, you know, yeah, that, that's interesting already. Roy, you, you were saying like that... Um, uh, what, what were you saying on this one? The the wood element. Is it a musty wood element? A musty wood. I, I definitely get that. I, I I get that, but it's sort of like in combination with a, uh, a baking bread element. If I, if I do the nose and then I go in for a sip, or I take a sip actually and then go back oh, to the no. nose, I'm kind of getting this um, yeah this bread breadish quality. Mm. But I can do you guys have sourdough breads? Sorry. Do you have sourdough breads? We yeah. do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love a good sourdough. I see that. You, uh, you could convince me of that, yeah. It's <laughs> here. And I know that we're, we're sipping something that's, that's going to be different. Slightly before. different, yeah. And on, on ours, I'm getting a little bit of um, a little caramel on the palate, which is not abnormal, obviously. Um, but also like a like a tiny bit of lemon or something. Yeah, that's that brightness. I, that, like. I think that's where that brightness is coming it's from. It's a, slightly floral, slightly citrus. Yeah, a combination of the rye spice in there and the brightness of, yeah, of citrus. That's amazing because the, the eucalyptus uh, confection I'm talking about is called lockets, but the flavor is eucalyptus, honey, and lemon. Mm, I'm, yeah, I could definitely see honey in this. Yeah. That's so funny. I, I've always, been, well, I shouldn't say I've always been a fan of Eagle Rare because back when. This is Elijah Craig. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Thank you. The, both, you're getting the E's confused. They both start with E. Yeah. And, this, uh, this is a common theme on your channel. Oh yeah, no. But you're you're good at, at kind of keeping each other in check, right? <laughs> each other Completely in check. normal. Um, I actually didn't used to be a fan of Elijah Craig, or at least I thought I wasn't, because back when I was starting, I didn't understand what a pick was. And my first bottle of Elijah Craig was a pick, and I was just like, "Why is everyone raving about Elijah Craig? It's not good." <laughs> and then I found out what picks were that they are a single barrel of what is normally a small batch, and then I got a normal non-pick version of Elijah Craig. And I learned that sometimes picks can be picked, I don't want to say incorrectly, but There's by no someone incorrect. with someone with a palate who was trying to go with something very unusual. Or or it's subjective, you know, that yeah. something is spoken to them from that 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 cast. Absolutely. And they've gone with it. Some people are like, oh, this is so funky and outside of the box and not like so it normally different. is. Yeah. So we're gonna pick this barrel. And I don't think that's ever really been our. No, I think the essence of a good pick is keeping this the spirit of the original. Uh, ah, I keep saying that of the original bottle, but that's pulling out maybe a certain flavor direction. It's really showcasing that direction, uh, not so much as just being different for different sake. Like it builds on its strengths. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. A forte. Absolutely, that's interesting as well. Well, in the spirit of in the spirit. Sorry, I apologize. That wasn't every time we say spirits of, of sipping and, and contrast. I'm going to reach out for number three so that we can do a bit of back and back, back and forth if that's okay. Hopefully, you've got enough glasses. Yeah, just, just a wee <laughs> bit left. Just a wee bit. Also, if a wee bit if in the show, if I start uh, subconsciously trying to emulate your accent, it, please stop him. Please stop me. It, it, let's, let, let's agree if I start to pick up on phraseology that you guys use it's perfectly it's a human thing it's yeah, usually it's usually um a compliment right it's a positive yeah, thing it's not a unique to me I, I think a lot of people will subconsciously start oh, wow. emulating someone else's uh speech patterns or, or accent and this is a gift from my friend and co-creator, Vin at No Nonsense Whiskey. He sent me this up recently. Vin, thank you so much. You'll see it's had a good hit. I've already started sharing it. All the drams that we're sharing tonight are being enjoyed by the guys in the chat. So Sevi has some. Uh, Neil and Dave are both enjoying the exact same flight as me tonight. So it'd be interesting to get their feedback and they can call us out on the nonsense that I'm speaking. <laughs> <laughs> or they can uh, hopefully agree in some of the things that I'm picking up. Well, just so you know, this was a live uncorking for us. We uh, This was a fresh cork pop, and uh, I think we have one other tonight that's going to be that. So well, I was going to have four uncorkings tonight. 
but because I wanted to get the drams out so that they get some of the guys in the chat, some of the guys local to me that were coming in to participate in that little game show element we had going there, I wanted them to have the drams, so I had to uncork in advance. Yeah. So um, I opened some of these. Uh, somebody came and delivered a package earlier today, and literally they looked in, and this desk was clear. The only thing that was on here was about seven bottles of bourbon, <laughs> and I'm sitting here at like <laughs> one thirty in the afternoon just <laughs> uncorking. And I kind of looked in. Okay. <laughs> and then they're just kind of like, and they, they're just, you know, oh, it's lockdown, you know. Yes, yeah, so yeah. I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking, yeah. Michael Porter at Sunday Evening Scotch. <laughs> Cheers to this topic. I've fallen in love with bourbon over the last year. Their channel has been key in learning and fun. I noticed that Russell's single barrel is no longer behind you. Uh, <laughs> my favorite. The Russell's single barrel is one of the uncorking I was talking about. Ah. This is also from Sir Dwayne, believe it or not. And uh, um, I've already opened this up tonight, so I'm looking forward to trying that soon. But the one we have in the glass just now is often celebrated for being very affordable and good quality. Is that correct? Yes. It is. Four Roses, you know, you talk about... They're almost independent, right? They're not, they're not part of the big... No, they, they are now. Yeah, they're oh, okay. uh, Kirk um Campari? No, that's that's uh no. Wild Turkey. They're Kirkin, Kirkland, Kirk Kirk Kieran, Karen Calkin. Why don't I know this? My brain just blanked. Macaulay uh, Calkin? No, that's wrong. No. Um uh <laughs> yeah, they're a uh, Japanese owned. Yes. I I'm uh, totally blanking. Again. It's like Kier send the chat to help. Kirkin Kark Kieran? Kieran. Kieran? Kieran? Oh, I don't know. I forget. Anyways. Kieran is a Japanese company, um, yes, Ben Marnock and Gordon Dundas. So Ben is, both of these guys are in the industry. Uh, ben Marnock uh, works in a bottling plant, bottling for various producers. And Gordon Dundas is the global brand ambassador for Ian McLeod, who make Glen Goyne and Tam Du. Wonderful to have both of you in and confirming that it's Kieran that on Four Roses. All right. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Four Roses, there's definitely Four Roses fanboys out there. Oh, like yeah. Buffalo Trace and well, pretty much a lot Everyone's of the, a lot of the big ones. Yeah, but Four Roses is unique. Their unique thing is they have ten recipes. Um, so they have five yeast strains and two, um, or sorry, five mash bills and two yeast strains to make ten recipes total. Now this is their single barrel, one hundred proof. So this is recipe number one, which is their high rye. Now this is actual high rye. This is thirty five percent rye. So we're which talking. Yeah. I love. 60% corn, 35% rye, 5% malted barley. They have a lower rye mash bill, which is still 75% corn, 20% rye. So still, you know, talking about buffalo trace, uh, still a high rye, mm -hmm. and then that 5% malted barley. So this is... Well, that kind of explains a lot to me because this is suddenly smelling, this is nosing green to me. It's yeah. much greener. Um, almost, it's making me think about... Uh, it's making me think about grass, but I'm not thinking about bright green, fresh, mature grass. Again, it's a drier cereal thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I do get that, and I with the rye get a little bit more um, like baking spices. I'm getting a little bit like rye bread on this one. Yeah. So the the wow. recipe on this one is called OBSV, and that V is referring to the yeast strain, which they describe as delicate fruit. So one day I'll have it memorized what all the letters mean. I, I think I have it every year. Mm -hmm. I'll revisit it and I'll be like, I knew that. No. Uh, and and then that's not your job. That. That's not your job. Your job no. is to host and be entertaining and do what you're doing. Yeah. And like, the community you know, is knowledgeable enough for, for anybody's needs. And yeah. they can chime in and help you out when you have missing pieces in the puzzle. Mm -hmm. That's an amazing thing again, in contrast. Right. That's bizarre yeah you definitely I'm, get the rye coming through more and you know all the things that i kind of associate with bourbon um some of these are going to sound negative but they're just there um obviously i'm getting lots of heavy vanilla extract i'm getting lots of the oak and the wood um i'm getting that toffee caramel flavor that we associate with bur bourbon and all of these um, and I'm also getting a little bit of an acetone, almost kind of chemically painty note, but you only get that, I think, if you're um, if you're coming from a different style of whiskey, you can sometimes pick that up. Yep. What's happened with all of those notes tonight is that they've fallen back into the background. 
Ah. I'm starting to taste past that because of the contrast thing, because I'm focusing on the things that differentiate yeah. rather than the common features that they have. Well, one thing that we've discovered about Four Roses doing blind flights is the Four Roses, I think depending upon the recipe, but especially some recipes really stick out as being so unique that when you put it in a blind flight of four, it can actually hinder it. I think just because it becomes the outlier yeah. because of its uniqueness. Where if you're trying like, let's just say a classic bourbon flavor, classic bourbon flavor. Oh, this is kind of, I don't know, kind of funky, you know, just because it's different and unique and maybe more mm -hmm. floral or maybe has that higher rye that's uh, given it some, you know, holiday spices or, or uh, some um, cinnamon stick or so forth. And it, it can, a lot of times we find Four Roses when we review them independently, we love, but when we do them blind, a lot of times they end up more towards the back. Just, That's interesting. You know, you try them side by side and, and it can hinder it. Sure. I, I think, yeah, the uniqueness just makes it like, oh, this one's different. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, Different scares me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right. And I think that if you sip it in isolation, it doesn't scare you because you're going to sit there and enjoy it. Right. But as soon as you contrast it and the other things, that's a bit more uh, similar to each other, whereas yeah. that is the standout. Yeah. The same dynamic happens in scotch. I'm going to hit you with another dynamic in a minute because it struck me now. Uh, Jeff Patron, uh, I played a little game with him the other night and, and he managed to beat me the other night as well. Jeff, good to have you in. He's saying talking about yeast strains isn't entertaining. <laughs> I've got a community asking me to do an entire VPUB on yeast. I'm like, what? I just like yeah. this. you make bread with it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, uh, there's, there's something that happens in whiskey, and it's a it's a it's a concept that I don't always focus on or think about, but when it hits me, it hits me. And it's happened right now. And it's interesting because the, the guys in the chat are drinking the exact same whiskey as I am, and you guys are kind of similar. Depending on the whiskey that you're sipping and how you sip it, it activates different parts of your mouth and it leaves a tingle at different. Some are very frontal, mm -hmm. the top gums, the tip of your tongue, some are along the side, some are the palate or the roof of your mouth, and some are towards the back. Suddenly, the back of my palate has been activated. I don't. Yes. Is that right? That's that, why. Yeah, I. Are uh, you just indulging me, or do you do you have I don't that? Know, I feel, who told us that? Was it Dixon, Dixon Deadman? Dixon Deadman of, of Kentucky, Kentucky Owl, Owl was leading us through a tasting and he was saying how when you drink something that's more uh, like less rye forward maybe a weeded or a weeded, corn yeah. forward um you're going to notice it activate the front of your tongue or maybe even the sides but something with a, a higher rye content will definitely go to the back um i'm also getting and it could be a combination of the rye and the hundred proof but i'm getting what we call a kentucky hug so that warmth in your chest uh it's nice i like it i'm not I'm yeah, gonna, I, love, I love the phrase kentucky hug. I'm not getting hugged yet, no, no, I, I have to say. I do think that in comparison to the Elijah Craig going back, uh, the Elijah Craig seems a lot softer and sweeter when you compare it to this. But that's, and if, if, if imagine if we went all the way back to the, the Eagle Rare, then that would be super sweet then. Yeah, oh, super yeah. mellow, just uh, that proof, yeah. then, that proof comparison. See, when you, you Don, 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 Nishita, Don Nishita is suggesting Don. that Don, uh, he's, he's a star, and he's saying for. Yeah. For my, myself, choosing a preference between scotch and bourbon is like choosing your favorite child. <laughs> equally, but some days I may prefer one over the other. Absolutely, Don. May we all aspire to arrive where you are, where you're able to enjoy all the styles. Thank you, Don, for joining us, and thank you for your virtual drama friend. Cheers. That's quite amazing. I'm excited now. Let's go on to the fourth one. Are you up Let's for it? Let's do it. it. I'm, wait, more glasses. <laughs> No, well, I had I had seven glasses. I knew what I was in for, but you guys need fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've got them. We've got them. They lot, just might require times, some gathering. Yeah, a lot of times it's just oh, I don't want to do that many dishes. Um. <laughs> Let's have a quick distraction based on that theme because I'm a little bit jealous of you guys in a certain in a certain way, and that's because and I know that way back in the early days of the channel there was lots of content out there that was only Chad, but you guys are a, a duo now. You're and you're able to bounce off each other. You're able to talk about. Um, the content you're able to kind of almost use each other as a sounding board, whereas I am pretty much I rely on the community and the patrons for that kind of thing, and my wife perhaps and things. But you guys have got that going. Can we talk a little bit how your channel developed? Because you guys are just lighting the place up now. I think it's wonderful to have you there. 
I wish you every success. I think you're tremendous at it. It's almost like a perfect storm, you guys coming together. Yeah. Tell us how how did it happen? Can you can you summarize that succinctly? Is there a succinctly is there a story? <laughs> well, after four bourbons or three three bourbons, it's going to be harder to be succinct. But um, yeah, I could be succinct. Go for it, Sarah. I think no, nobody's got... going anywhere. We're all locked in. <laughs> We both had a toe dipped into the bourbon world and just like a general personal interest um, through separate companies. We were on a job together to make a video content for a bourbon bar that I was working at. I think that really piqued our interest because we were both in Kentucky and we were like, how is this bourbon bar have 200 bourbons? And I can't name all of them. Um, so it was sort of like a challenge. We hit it off. Um, Chad's got a video background. I have a marketing background. We both loved bourbon started tasting things together just in our free time as friends, as Chad likes to caveat, uh, as friends. So we would taste and then eventually we were like, well, what are we going to do with this time? Let's, let's make some content. Uh, that was 2016. That was 2016. Yeah. Yeah. I'd always wanted to take my two passions, which were bourbon and video production and put them together. And, you know, I've, I've always said, I just hadn't met that right person to go along the journey because I'm not motivated enough by myself. I need that other person to, <laughs> uh, you know, to help me get things done and yeah. to provide <laughs> inspiration. Yeah. As you said, the, Put sounding, the rails on the track, the sounding board. <laughs> yep. Sarah just made sense. And I was like, oh, okay, this is, this is the person for that. So let's, let's do it. That's how it started. You tell, you tell it, you tells it much more romantically than you I do. You tells it. This fine. When you, so when you the to get together, you were not an item then. You were, we were you not. Were, we were just friends. Somewhere um, along the way, the bourbon brought us together. That's fair. And and now we need to raise a wee glass of this Russell's Reserve to say congratulations on your on your recent wedding as well. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Listen, as uh, as the, my friend the whiskey rev often says, whiskey is there anything it can't do? <laughs> <laughs> not that's that, a great shirt. Not that we found yet. <laughs> solved our problems. Yeah. Okay, now Roy, you're also drinking a, a pick, correct? Of your Russell's single barrel? It is a pick. It's from Dwayne. And again, it's it's going to be a, a similar theme. I mean, because I don't really, I'm not comfortable in the bur bourbon world, the bourbons I have, the majority of them are bought for me as gifts from the community. And it's often the case that, you know, I've got, you, you saw them from my list, I've got Alabama and Arizona, and I've got these kind of, Bizarre, kind of more small scale craft style presentations there as well. But these are bought by people coming in because they know to bring me scotch would be like a little bit like taking, you know, tea to China or something. It's, <laughs> um, so so they, they bring me these, but I'm often aware that I'm keeping them sealed for too long. And the gift, these, these are gifts that people are looking for me to open and drink and enjoy. And, and because I'm keeping them for a special moment, they sit there a bit too long. Mm. So to be able to do something like this and have a contrast between one dram and the next and have somebody guiding me through what I'm sipping, that, that's, that seems like a perfect way to, to get a lot of these opened and to kind of out there and shared. Um, but yes, the, the, <laughs> your question was, it's a store pick. It's certainly a single barrel. And the tag around the collar says um, that it's another vine and table pick. So oh, not, I got a vine and table. Vine and table, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, another, it's, it's another one from Dwayne. Now, Dwayne comes over to Scotland twice a year, and he spends uh, a lot of time going around Scottish distilleries. He's a huge bourbon fan, and he's a huge Scotch fan. Um, and he always kind of, uh, if, I, if we get a chance to meet up, he's always got something nice and his backpack for me. So Ooh. thank you to, to Dwayne for that as well. Well, I knew that that your Russell's was a pick. So we picked a pick. <laughs> we picked a pick. That we picked. That we picked as well. So we were actually on this pick. Um, this is what's known as the Warehouse Delicious because it comes from Warehouse D. Um, but this was a collaboration of the Lexington Bourbon Society, which we're both members of, and Chad and Sarah yeah. <laughs> of its of its bourbon night. We kind of nudged and we're like, nah, that, that's this one. It's this one. Come on, it's this one. The nice wow. thing about being able to taste uh, single barrels, like to do a pick at Wild Turkey, is that you can taste, I think, between like nine and 12 generally. The bad thing about picking at Wild Turkey is that you taste between nine, nine and 12 well. barrels. Yeah. Um, so by the end of it, your, your palate's sort of fried. But the other great thing is you're doing it with the master distiller, Eddie Russell, which is amazing. Wow. And you're, yeah. you know, you're thieving straight out of the barrel at barrel strength and you're in the warehouse. 
And it's just magical. I feel like Wild Turkey is one of those more divisive of the popular distilleries. I feel like people are really big fans of Turkey or they, I wouldn't say they hate it. They just haven't found the light yet. I don't think anyone hates Wild Turkey. I think, you, yeah, you're either a super fan or you're just like, yeah, it's fine. Mm, okay. This this one on the nose, this is this has gone now. This is starting to get hotter. This is up at fifty five percent. So we're we're creeping up a little bit. It's not too yeah. hot. If you're going to talk about bourbon, you you got to do proof. No, he oh, just sorry, yeah. let him. It's, so it's one ten. It's one ten proof, isn't it? Right. Yep. That's um, right. But this is this has gone all, and it may just be because my palate is adjusting and it's settling into that group. But this has gone all kind of a candied banana on me now. Mm. So right. there, there's yeah. a fruit coming in here now that I'm picking up, but it's yep. a sweet fruit, almost like a, a confectionery again, or a cooked fruit or something, uh, maybe something. I almost got a little bit of ripe peach. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I get clove a little bit. There I think there's clove, a yeah. there's 13% rye uh, in this one. So it does have a little bit of that spice, not quite as much as uh, the Four Roses, but. Right. Yeah, the, I'm, not, I'm not getting past the foam banana on this. <laughs> if my guys are getting any of this, if you want banana, banana. you need to uh, you need to be tasting anything from Brown Foreman, Old Forester, Old especially. Forester, Woodford Reserve. Yes, Jack so. comes from Brown Foreman. I always get banana and like yeah. bright fruit, like maraschino cherries, fresh cut orange, but mostly banana whenever I taste um, anything from Brown Foreman. Really, yeah. Are you getting any banana elements from this? I, d I don't. Um, Someone's peeling a banana in the next room. <laughs> there I, are bananas in the That's the most <laughs> polite way I've ever heard anybody say no. <laughs> well, I think it's just because when anyone says banana, we have like the, if so, I have facto, something in my head. The, the, the de facto, uh, what is banana? And that is brown foreman. I'm not, I'm not speaking about peeling bananas i'm not talking about green bananas or anything i'm speaking about fake banana flavor actually is what i'm speaking about it's like a confectionery banana um like a banana taffy or something like that if i'm looking for it i can i can see it but mm. it's not it's not what pops up first but, but i mean it's, uh, you you mentioned the peach and the clove <laughs> and it, by the power of suggestion by the power of you kind of leading me absolutely the stone fruit thing is there yeah. That is a good point though. I mean, our picks are are gonna be a bit different on the spectrum. So And we would not pick anything that, that tasted like banana. That's because it's not, right, okay, it's okay. not our it's not our profile. Go to. Well yeah. this is from Rick House F four five. Wonderful definition here. Not yeah, familiar with that. the battle number as well. <laughs> yeah. And you know the the so as we said, this is from the Wild Turkey Distillery in Lawrenceburg, Kentucky. And the great thing about wild turkey, you know, they have a lot of different expressions. You know, the wild turkey, 81, 101, the rare breed, the Kentucky Spirits, the yeah. Russell's line. They have two mash bills. They have the bourbon mash bill and the rye mash bill. And that's it. So every expression, if it's a bourbon, is that 75% corn, 13% rye, 12% malted barley. Which really speaks to like the nature versus nurture yes. of them, you know. The maturation of where it comes from in the warehouse, the age, wow. uh, all that, oh, the, yeah. the, the blending together, you know. How uh, they can do so much with that one mash the, bill. The different species of oak that go into the barrel can draw out different flavors, all that, um, all from one mash bill. That is interesting. That is interesting. If you compare this, I have an empty glass from the Four Roses, but on the nose even, Going back to the Four Roses, I get way more fruit, yeah, um, and spice, and even a little bit. You, of fruit. you get more fruit on the on the Russells, yes. On the Four Roses, actually, in comparison, than I did when we just tasted it a minute ago. How, would you ever put water in this? Would you ever put little drops in, or or kind of try uh, and open it up? Yeah, usually, like when we uncork something and open it for the first time, uh, if it's over a hundred proof. Eh, depending on how much over a hundred proof, we'll generally put a couple of drops of water in just to see how it opens up. Yeah. Okay. So you feel free to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, what I may do is I'll, I'll, I'm not going to finish or drain any of these glasses. I love going backwards and forwards and you can oversaturate your palate a little bit, of course, but it's nice to go back. 
and, and I did an online tasting last night. We, we only had five drams, but that's exactly what happened. That some of the drams early in the night were kind of still sitting a little bit flat, and it was only the obvious flavors and hooks that stood out. But as the night went on and you went back and sipped in contrast, other things started to pop. Um, yeah. And I think it's a common thing. It's a good thing to leave a little bit in your dram so you can go backwards and forwards. Absolutely. And it's also opening up in the glass too. Yeah. So just time of it sitting in the glass. Can... I'm going to be really surprised if I tune into the other guys who are going to drop in a bit later tonight and they don't find this foam banana thing I'm getting in this glass. It's... <laughs> I mean, I'm very interested in that. Yeah. You know, I really love doing this. I think this is so fun. Yeah, I'm I looking at the thumbnail. It. Neil, or is anybody else getting fo – can anybody give me a thumbs up if they get any concept of a foam banana? They're saying no. No. sevi has got it. So, Sevy and I obviously went to the same – you would say gas station. We would say petrol station. <laughs> we sell these, these foam bananas. I guess more bananas. Um, okay. But I can't get past it. It's really – So I'm there not, is a – Taste a past the banana. Sometimes you get things that no one else will get. And I think that that's like, I don't know, it's sort of your personal experience. It's kind of intimate um, with whiskey in general of like you start to identify certain things. There are like weird pours that I will get a very specific, you mentioned like gas station candies or something. And that's what it reminds me of. There's weird things that will just remind you of a play, a specific place or time. I think that's the great thing about whiskey is like, there is an ability when you do finally connect with something like yeah, maybe you love it, maybe you don't, but it can almost transport you. Quick, quick story about that, Roy. We have um, a friend who is not much of a whiskey fan at all. He's just now breaking into some bourbon, but he went on a barrel pick at Woodford Reserve because his buddies were, were doing it. They're the ones who were buying the barrel. So he kind of went with them. And the uh, the taster at Woodford Reserve was, you know, talking about a bourbon. Ah, I get, you know, so and so and so and so and so and so and bubble gum. And he was like, I couldn't believe she said bubble gum. There's like, no, that's so there's stupid. no way in the world anyone gets bubble gum off of bourbon because you know this. He would, uh, I smell alcohol. You know, that's what he would say. And we yeah. were like, yeah, that's kind of weird. This was several years ago. Cut to probably a couple years later, and I don't remember what the bourbon was, but we were reviewing it, and we were like, I mean, like double bubble, if bubble you gum. double <laughs> bubble, I don't know. So I think it's you gas know, station bubble gum. Gas station bubble gum. <laughs> wow. Um, fruit by the foot. No, I think it's you know that old adage, uh, ten thousand hours, right? Is how much practice you need to put into something to become an expert. It's obviously the same with whiskey in general. You put the time in. You put the hours and the expressions and the different bottles in, and you will eventually find things that you would have thought you would have never found. Yeah. I, I find that the bubblegum thing comes from grain whiskey and scotch. Mm -hmm. So not when it's 100% malted barley through a pot still, but when it's, when it's a grain, so wheat or corn heavy mash bill that goes through a, a column still. So it's, it's scotch is bourbon, I guess, but it goes in a refill barrel. But we'll often get bubblegum, sweet candy floss, cotton candy confectionery notes from it, that kind of thing. But I think that what, what you do is when you meet somebody and they say bubblegum, you need to let them feel confident about blurting out whatever they get. Totally. You 100%. need to, just as long as they're not inventing things, just say it because the more that you can, can express, the more bizarrely you start to taste. I agree. And yeah. you don't need to have somebody confirm or deny or whatever, just, just, have you confidently walk into the whiskey in a way that you feel comfortable about sharing what you're what you're getting? Yeah. Uh, Kilco O'Brien is saying, "I'll get to Kentucky and Scotland someday." You That's will, right. Brian. You will, Brian. Like I say, whiskey is there anything it can't do? Don't worry about it. it, it uh, whiskey comes to you. Lots and lots of people trying to get in touch with us in the the chat. Savvy the Alchemist is saying those old school banana hard mallow sweets. So he's he's obviously getting something similar to me. Stu Baby is saying, you know how, how we all feel about bananas, Roy. Mm -hmm. um, people, don't, people don't like bananas in this chat, but, but it's for a completely different reason. <laughs> uh, Wayne McCoy is saying, I have some old Forester 1910, and I think there is some banana on the nose and in the sure For sure. There for sure. Is. <laughs> so that's one of the brown foreman ones you were talking about, right? Yeah. That one yeah. is especially fruity. Yeah. That's a that's a double barreled uh product too. Graham Fraser is asking, do I have to open my wild turkey rare breed in small batch 1792 tonight, Roy? 
Uh, yeah. Why haven't you already, Graham? What's the problem? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. At yeah. least one. That's what it's locked down. We're all getting these bottles opened. Yeah. Oh, we're about finishing. Now, Rare Breed is an excellent value. You get a high proof oh. for a reasonable price. It's a great quality product. Yeah. I would recommend it. So there you go, Graham. That's your answer. Neil <laughs> Cochran, who's in tonight, has said, uh, Gentleman Jack is bubblegum central. Again, huh? Gentleman Jack, another Brown Foreman thing. Oh, so maybe that kind of sweet confectionery note. Wonderful stuff. Let's let's pour number, what number are we on? Five? Are we five. on five? I think we're on five. Yeah, we are. And while you pour that, I actually have a question for you, if you don't mind. For me, absolutely, yeah. What is the most uh, interesting or intriguing flavor that you've ever picked out of a whiskey? That you just like don't usually get. Mm. Um, it's it it's right now. So I'm going to just answer on the spur of the moment. If maybe if you gave me some time to ponder that cool question, I'd maybe come up with something a bit more uh, inspirational. But I think one of my one of my favourite uh, whiskies in terms of a, a distillery. When this distillery performs well, there's a flavour in it that is unmistakable and so utterly addictive that that is what you start to crave when you're looking for not just the, the best examples from that distillery, but also other distilleries that are capable of doing the same thing. And it's going to sound weird, but it's it's like white candle wax or a very clean vanilla wax. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I can't say I've ever, I've ever picked that out, but that mm. is so interesting. But it's not because... It's the thing about whiskey. It's not because you're tasting those things. You sure, don't want to feel like a nice snack of wax. candle wax or shoe <laughs> polish or leather or all of these things that we get. But but what it, the way that the whiskey interacts with you, and the way that you that you kind of articulate that. Sometimes you're pulling in some bizarre things. But the distillery I'm talking about, anybody in my chat, I'll know that I'm I'm speaking about Clan Leash, um, which is a Highland distillery which is famous for its wax. Sometimes. Uh, I'm always going to say it waxes and wanes <laughs> it uh -huh. comes and it goes. It, it's not always present, but when it's there, uh, when it's been taken care of, usually in a refill bourbon cask or certainly, let's say, a, if it's a sherry cask, it has to be a, a refill sherry cask. Let's say not an active cask and it's left for a decent amount of time so the spirit and its waxiness can stay intact and then a, some, have some environmental and wood effects going on. Mm. It is trans inducing <laughs> and if that's your style of whiskey that is kind of um, unfortunately for us in scotch the scotch lover is that that's the style of whiskey for so many and that type that type of whiskey is expensive and it's very difficult to get especially an older uh example of it you know 20 30 years old um but that to me is when i hit that at the right moment it is i literally look to the sky and say i love whiskey Oh, I love whiskey. You must have you felt it, right? Better answer. <laughs> you said if you'd had more time. I think that that was an excellent yeah. answer. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and I know that there's so many people in the chat tonight that will know exactly. Um, and you know, there's there's going to be other examples. There's going to be other things that, that that apply in a very similar way. But just to answer your question, um, and I think that there's going to be a lot of people uh, that will relate to that or kind of flavors like that. So I made a mistake. I apologize to everybody. I suggested that this um, was going to be something different um, because the, I think it's because of the labeling on this. Maybe what, what caught me out here, Chad, tell me. I, I, so that's a pick. Yes. Mm -hmm. there, there's a, there's a kind of metallic strip here up the top. Ours is but a pick ours too. is a pick too. So this bottle it's just a newer is bottle. a redesigned bottle. They um, just released it. A newer one, yes. I think, yeah. So our label, which yours is me the metallic sticker, is just down here instead. So we're right. both drinking 120 proof Knob Creek. Yeah. But Chad sent me a little message to suggest I needed a bit more information for on the dram list under the video. Um, and I did update that. I Or did I update that? Maybe I didn't. Hmm. <laughs> Well, I think you had Knob Creek single, or sorry, Knob Creek small batch, which would indicate the 100 proof version that's on the market. And this is one. This is the single barrel, which is the 120. Knob Creek need to sort the labeling out. Perhaps they've addressed that because it does say single barrel, small batch. Yeah. Well, yeah. We've asked about that, and they say, well, what's the smallest smallest batch ever? It's a single barrel. And I'm like, okay, it, <laughs> it doesn't. Does this Not anymore. Say? It doesn't say that anymore. Yeah. So I think probably enough people complained. <laughs> yeah. Enough people. Yeah. 
So this is actually um, this is our pick. This is a mash made in heaven. Well, this is a this is a gift to me that was handed to me uh, face to face at a Ralphie tasting, actually, if I remember correctly. Wow. Yeah. Celebrity. It, it was handed to me by a member of the community who handed a bottle to Ralphie as well. A cool story goes with this. And he handed uh, Ross Mashburn, Ross and Jill, um, from, uh, oh dear, I'm going to have to guess. I think they're from South Carolina. I apologize, Ross and Jill, if I've got that wrong. I think they are. Mm -hmm. But they came over to the Ralphie tasting, and we were in this Ralphie tasting together. At the end, everybody kind of hands out um, gifts to each other. There's all that going on. And Ross and Jill handed a bottle of this to me and a bottle to Ralphie as well. And Ralphie, being the class act that he is, just opens it in the tasting. Yeah and just starts pouring it for everybody. I love that. So we all got to, this was the last drama of the day on that day. So it's got really nice memories for me too. Um, but I remember after a flight of scotches, when this hit my palate, it was explosive. It was, I mean, it's 60% AB, sorry, it's 120 proof. <laughs> I'm, I'm like math. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and I remember just the way that it sat there on my palate and I thought, this is, this is a different drink. Yes, it's whiskey, yeah. but not as not as we know it. Not as I've have I'd enjoyed that day. We drank some fantastic whiskeys that day, and it doesn't. It kind of told me that it doesn't need to be better or worse. It can be a contrast, and that's enough. Mm. Yeah, you know that's just that's enough. Um, so yeah, that's that that was a, a gift to me from from Ross and Jill. So what what do we have here in Knob Creek? Is this a completely different direction altogether? I would say so. It it you know this is from the Jim Beam Distillery. Um, Knob Creek, I think, is one of the best values mm. out there in bourbon. And even, very consistent. Yes, even at the 100 proof small batch level, which for us is 28 dollars. Um, I don't know what that oh. is. Pounds. I'm sorry. Yeah. But the uh, 120 proof is usually between 40 and $50, depending on if it's a pick or not. They have a non-pick version. It's just regular on the shelf. Mm -hmm. uh, 120 proof, though, that's, I mean, that's almost it's, barrel strength. Yeah. I mean, there are barrel strengths that are lower than 120. Yeah. Right. So you're up there in that in that barrel strength level, even though they will, pr it could be 100. I think this bottle in particular, which we picked, was like 122, 123. And they added just a little bit of water to get it down to that 120. So um, that is nice about it if you do a yeah. pick, is that a very little water is added to this one. The single barrel, the, the non-pick versions, are still age stated at nine years. Um, single barrels can go up to, uh, up to 15, 15. I've seen this one is like 13 years and three months, I believe. Yeah. Of course, when we picked it, we picked it blind. We didn't know what the age was of the barrel until after we said this is the right. One. Um, but it typically has this Jim Beam nuttiness that we tend to gravitate towards yeah, and love. Yeah, almost a, a dry roasted peanut, um, but I get oh, yes. a ton yeah. of oak coming forward on this one. Like, I think this is so char forward, so oak forward. Um, also, there's like this wow. syrup quality to it, this maple syrup. Uh, it's, it's, got a, it's got a great mouthfeel. It's got I'm going with the dry peanut thing. You've got me on that, definitely. When I first approached it, I got the kind of woody element, but I have to say, and I find this in scotch as well. It's got to be prevalent in bourbon. When you're nosing high ABV, you do start to get anesthetized a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. high AB, do you think you build up a tolerance to that? Do you think you're... Or, or... To some degree. I mean, I think your, your tongue can only take so much. Well, sure, yeah. Before it checks out, but... But I agree. To some extent, you know, I think you just... You, you know, you kind of just have to know how to approach it, right? <laughs> you just get all in there, right? And you don't take a big sip at first. Um, I know that there are still times when I get distracted and I'll nose a higher ABV, um, you know, the same way I would know something that's 90 proof and immediately I'll be like, Oh, my eyes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you sometimes get caught out. That. Yeah. And I mean, I think it's, it's something to be aware of as well, because what happens then is when you're going in and nose the whiskey, you're looking for things that you expect to smell and taste rather than things to surprise you. Be, because you're 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 kind of just going okay. I'm not getting a lot. It's quieting down, and it's maybe not because the whiskey's quiet at all. No, but maybe because you've started to dumb down your senses a little bit as well, and then yeah. you start to go on your experience rather than what it's, it's saying to you in the moment. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, interesting. Whiskey, Rob Whiskey in the Six is in as well. Good to see you, buddy. Hello. Um, from Canada, great to have you in here. Mashburn is here. Ross is here. Just poured some of that same pick. I had a couple of bottles. You star, Ross. And this, that metallic label I, I pointed out to you, again, that ambiguity or that confusion on the labeling here. I mean, this clearly says here, aged nine years. But up here, the, 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 the pick is actually a 14 year. Uh, yeah. Cask that's been picked. The TTB thing, the the uh, organization that approves labels. I mean, it's their normal on the shelf uh, single barrel is nine years, and and really that means the youngest uh, whiskey that is married into it is nine yeah. years old at least. But there can be older. So it, the same is true with uh, a barrel pick. The youngest. Well, it's a single barrel, so that that I just forget everything I just said. It's not blended because it's a single barrel, but no, I know the concept. It's the very same concept in Scott. Yeah. Okay, but, but what you're probably doing is they're just putting on their standard labeling, the standard right. bottle. And they don't want kind to of adding a, a little embellishment of a label, design a completely new label for picks. So they just put on the same old that they have on the non-pick version, and then it's you know. Always older. I don't think I've ever seen a pick that's been like younger than 12 years. Generally, it's, yeah, I would say between 10 and 15 years. Yeah. But mostly 12 seems to be the sweet spot. 12, 13. I yeah. get so much oak and char on this. And then that nuttiness coming up too. Again, ours is a different. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> and we lost Roy. We haven't seen this reaction. Yet. Flavor. I, I was, that was, caught me. I'm looking here. I'm. I was thinking about the amount of creators that's in here. Rob Whiskey in the Six is here. I see uh, Jason Mash and Drum is in. Somebody's mentioned Sipper Social Club, so suggest that Jeremy is in. His, Jeremy's in here as well. Earlier on, I saw Scott. It's just it's, it's a really nice family feeling when that happens, right? Um, but so I was completely focused on that, and then that hit my palate there. And it's higher ABV. The grip is there. Yeah. So what, what was being muted out on the on the nose... What I was struggling, I was kind of, I was glad that you were there to lead me to find that peanut thing. It was there. But when that hit the palate, it's like, oh, wow. And that tells me a couple of things. It tells me there's a good whiskey, of course. But it also tells me how effective a delivery mechanism ABV is or proof is in order to bring engagement. It's quite amazing. The great thing is, is we're going to end this tasting with Booker's, which is in the same family. Also, Jim Beam. Um, it's a even higher proof than this, a lot of the same flavors, but still in a different wheelhouse. And the other thing I was thinking about was, you know, we went from 90 to hundred, didn't notice a huge jump. We went from nine or from 100 to 110, didn't notice a huge jump. We went from 110 to 120. That I would is, say this has been the most noticeable jump. I so far. contrast is, is there. Yeah, for sure. Hey, I still this have- is the loudest whiskey we've had tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it, that's it, fully the hands of it, ABV, right? It does. It's quite a presence. Yeah. Jason at Mash and Drum is saying, two of my favorites. Nice to see you guys together. Roy and the Knob Creek lol. Hi, Chad and Sarah. Well, that's very similar to your reaction to Lagaville and 8. I'll remember back in the day, Jason. Uh, I have almost finished curating your blind challenge. I hope you're ready for that, my friend. I can't wait to work with you in that. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Please don't be nervous about it. I caught you in a live stream recently admitting that you were nervous. I wish I'd tuned in live to reassure you that it's it's, it's going to be fine. It's going to be good fun. Ruka Lax is saying, Roy, yeah, you didn't pay attention to the special labeling of labeling of Chad and Sarah's bottle as you were dreaming of Ral- Ralphie. <laughs> <laughs> Make up for it. <laughs> Ralphie, I dream of Ralphie. <laughs> there you go. I love that shirt. That's a shirt right there. <laughs> yeah. Willie Dollar is saying uh, there, is, uh, there is the silent recognition of a quality dram. I don't think I was silent, was I? I think I let out a wow or something. I mean, it was a visual speechless. Yeah. But that happens. And you've got to kind of, it's a bit like trying to articulate language. Sometimes the nicest thing is is a physical reaction or even silence. Mm. Um, Mikey Hay, whose birthday it was recently as well, I took him. Interestingly, it was Klein Leash. It was a whiskey I was talking about. And we took him, I took him to a whiskey bar in Glasgow, a famous bar called the Potstill, and they had a Carn Moore early 90s Klein Leash right in the sweet spot of what I was after and asked how much it was, and it was double what I wanted to pay. But Mikey's from London. I'm not going to see him again. I said, okay, let's let's enjoy this. Let's enjoy the moment. And and I gave it to Mikey as his first time. And I'm talking like I'm talking now, the talking to, like I do. Hmm. And Mikey's mid-sip, and he puts his hand up 
to shut me up, to stop talking. And he turned away. And I went, oh, I've offended him. What have I said? What have I done that's wrong? And he's facing the other way. And this, this silence just hangs in the air for the longest time. And then he just turns back around and he just, he just goes, I can't say the word he said, but he said it just out loud. He was just like, wow. And to this day, I recall that story, that moment that I witnessed that vicarious enjoyment hmm. of what, I, what, what, what whiskey has given to me so many times. Um, yeah. It's a very cool thing. And that was just silence. That wasn't him kind of expressing or he wasn't animated at all. He just went off in a moment and told me to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's sort of like a, appreciating a piece of art, you know? Sure. You just take a step back and it's your own experience, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Um, awesome. Jimmy Leg Blair is in and he said, do you know Jimmy Leg? Who's that? Blair Conrad. No, Jimmy Leg. Um, he's in tonight and he's saying, you pushed back from the desk. Mm. <laughs> you did. <laughs> you, oh, did. You, you got back. You had a moment. It was it was nice. Yeah, a moment. So, he, yeah, here's the moments. Here's the moment. <laughs> I think something else that's striking about this compared to the ones that we've had up until now is that this one's mm. got um, kind of a buttery texture. Yes. I think that when paired with that proof and that, you know, boldness of flavor, it really does have that impact, but yeah. it does have that buttery nature. Yeah. So I'm going to, when we talk about the way where it's, where it's activating our palates here, this is right across the mid palate mm. for me. Everything. If I was to swish this around my gums, I, this would uh, this ABV. I think it would just it would light up everything, right? You'd yeah. be left with this tingle, this kind of this lovely thing that becomes really quite enjoyable and, and addictive. And I say addictive in a very healthy, right. <laughs> if sure. it can be such a thing way. And yeah, a flavor that you enjoy and appreciate. But mm -hmm. the thing that you just described, Roy, um, that's been coined the Kentucky Chew, actually from. Fred No, the master distiller of of uh, Knob Creek and other Jim Beam products. It's Fred No's signature that's written here. That's it. Mm -hmm. I have to say as well, it's dangerous because we're at the highest ABV and it's the one that I'm reaching back. It's mm. very Moorish. I keep using that word Moorish. It's <laughs> encouraging me to go back. So that's, this uh, that's a very, very, that's a very, very engaging whiskey right we've still, we've still got two more to go yeah we do we're gonna, we're gonna we bite off more than we can kentucky chew uh -huh. <laughs> we're gonna take another kind of i mean it's not a full 10 proof points of a jump but when we're at this level at every this jump level every is proof a... point counts and we're going to a stag junior which has a reputation of kicking stag kicks is what we is what we say and this is our second of quarantine of the evening, as you can say, it's not, or as you can see, it's not uh, not opened yet. Good, you go right ahead. I opened this earlier today only to share samples from it. I've not tried this yet. This was a gift, right? Sorry, one twenty-seven point nine. Yes, absolutely, uh, sixty-three point nine five. I think you'll find in the metric language. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know. Uh, 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 one twenty-seven point nine, absolutely. So you said that this was batch eleven. You felt batch eleven. Yep. Mm. So um, this is a gift from Gregor McQuee out in Oregon. Actually, he's an Edinburgh boy, but he's he's working for uh, Adidas out in Oregon. Great guy. I've got to hang out with uh, Gregor a few times. Wait, can and you say the company again? The company he works for? Adidas? Yeah. We say Adidas. Adidas. Uh, we say Adidas as well. Ad oh, Adidas. 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 Uh, yeah. Sometimes we say Adidas, sometimes we say Adidas. There's probably people in my own town of Glasgow saying, why is Roy saying Adidas? I no, <laughs> I love it. Saying, why would he say Adidas? I love um, it so much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that, you know, that's the fun that we had in Texas when we're, when we're kind of together, kind of enjoying the little quirks and things that we have. Yeah. Um, we have, we speak the same language, but it's been a little bit, um, a little bit modified over the years. Mm -hmm. We were, um, we were doing a little accent wall of wallpaper recently and I was watching a video on YouTube about how to wallpaper. And uh, it was a British fellow and he was saying adhesive instead of adhesive. We say adhesive. He was saying adhesive. And uh, I latched on. I would say adhesive. Yeah. yeah. Chad. Yeah. Chad grasped onto that one uh, to a degree that mm, might've annoyed me. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of, what kind of metal do you wrap your uh, meat in before you oh, put it in the oven? Aluminium. It's aluminum. Aluminum? <laughs> Um, yeah, okay. It's definitely aluminium. 
<laughs> or lo I love it and I hate it. <laughs> yeah, it's aluminium. It's aluminium. It's While I wrap my meat in aluminium and then I'm going to mix some adhesive. It's so interesting. I'm I'm obsessed. Yeah. Whiskey, so Wing, Whiskey Wings bought us a dram just quickly. Sorry. Uh, that's Mike. Fantastic, Mike. Um, I know you're front line, my friend. It's wonderful to welcome you in here and thank you so much for... Yeah. I know that you're out there doing your thing and helping us all through this stuff. Uh, Phil Game Fra Phil or Fi Gam Fryer, it looks like, has joined Aquavite Barflies. Thank you so much and welcome in, my friend. And uh, we've got the rookie wine and whiskey enthusiast. Wow, you're covering it. Uh, he's saying Stag Jr. is a whiskey that will smack you in the mouth and make you love it and ask for more. Yeah, wow. Okay, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. You're not wrong. Is this, Roy, is this your first Stag Jr.? Yes. So my first stag junior was on at the end of a New Year's Eve, and that's the only time I've. I mean, it felt like you know when you get that knockout punch in um like a boxing. What only I can imagine that feels like if you're boxing and you get that knockout punch. Being the person that was knocked out, that's what it feels like to me. Okay, I'm getting now, a little. Now since then, I've I've definitely come to appreciate it. I'm getting a little grape bubble gum on the nose. I get some grape. I get. It almost kind of reminds me of like a Thanksgiving meal and that it's got savory and sweet, like turkey and stuffing and cranberry sauce. The schnozberries taste like, like schnozberries. It's got a little herbal. It's got some savory. It's got some... Right. The, the herbal thing is aniseed licorice. Yes. Um, It's there. Man. It, okay. it's, There's very, that it's very big, right? It's rich and round and full. Oh, yeah. It hits you everywhere in the yeah. mouth. That's um, yeah. You know the condition when people have a is it synesthesia or when the, when their senses are confused. Mm. Do you ever think of color when you taste whiskey? I often yes. think of color. Yep. I'm thinking, this is what color? Bright. I was thinking of purple too. Well, it's the this is bright purple, like or burgundy or dark dark red. Yeah. That's very like that. It's it's kind of um. It's it, it's drying. Is it finishing dry? It's a bit dry. Well, I, I kind of think of Cabernet. Um, with it this. almost does feel, I think it is that kind of that grape note that's leading to a wine feel. Um, now, I feel like that's, when did you open it? You just opened yours the other day, right, Roy? I opened, I opened it this afternoon. Okay, yeah. So his is fresh, I, I, I think it's I think it's kind of a neck pour. I think, you know, stags, when they open up. They definitely develop. They definitely develop. But this one, man, it is... Stain right? right here. It's a chest spreader. It's a <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a term. <laughs> this, is, this is the boldest whiskey that we've tasted tonight. This is the most um Ooh. Ooh. so <laughs> if it's if you can believe it, this is still from the same family that the Eagle Rare was from. That's right. Mash this is, bill number one. This is full circle. This is still mash bill number one, the same mash bill as that Eagle Rare, but wow. 27.9. Point proofs, proof points. It works. I gotta go. I'll be back. Bye, John. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Thanks, everybody. No, he'll be back. Night, 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 night. I'm in good <laughs> health. You know, listen. This is the the the, the aniseed is there. What's developing for me now? It's going to be interesting to see how this because obviously you guys have bought into the concept of neck pour. Whiskey Wings has joined Barflies as well. Thank you, my friend. Thanks for joining. The idea of a neck pour that that. Don't judge a whiskey on maybe the first two, three pours. Let mm -hmm. it get past the shoulder. Let it breathe a little bit. Sure. Um, I, I buy into that very much as well. And even if it's psychosomatic or if it's – doesn't matter. You experience it. It's like getting but, to know someone. You know, do you base your opinion of someone on your very first introduction? I think that you, you get a sense, but then things can, can kind of change the more you get to know someone. And I think it's very much the same. I'll go one further than that, though, that if you – if you buy a second bottle of something that you've become familiar with and gone to love, the second bottle, you you can sometimes think, oh, that's changed the first couple of pours. Yep. But you leave it a little while and then it comes back into its own and you think, ah, okay, it is that familiar experience I had previously. This is this is the most tannic. That, that The kind of tannins thing. You mentioned wine. The I grape think that's where Chad's getting that wine. I, we do get a great, a little bit of a grape note. Now, that's interesting because I've never said that with stag before. So I think that might just be a batch 11 thing. What happened? Uh, we're talking about like tannins and grapes and a little bit of wine note. Yes, absolutely. So the dryness, when I when I spoke about the dryness, I don't think it's dry, but it's 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 kind of gone that little bit tannic. Um, 
this is I think this will I, I think I fully agree with what, what you've just said. You mentioned it, Chad, before you went away there that talking about the neck pour, I think that this will develop to be a very, very powerful proposition on the shelf, I think. Absolutely. And going back to the Knob Creek, I get again that just like nuttiness and the oak, but also a little bit of chocolate in comparison. I get a little saddle, a little leather. A little leather? Just from the nut of the Knob Creek. So interesting. This one you can smell from across the room. I mean, you really just put it up about there and you're getting a great nose. Yeah. You know what I'm, what I'm enjoying and I've become conscious of it, so I'm leaning back. <laughs> I'm chewing. Mm, I'm kind yeah. of smacking and chewing and kind of, and that's another ABV thing, I think. Yeah. Maybe it's the, the corn thing about bourbon. Maybe it's the sweetness and the, um, maybe it's the texture. I'm not sure, but I do find myself doing more of that than I normally would. Well, the, there's, also, there's a richness. There's also a, a kind of a savory note to it, which I think can happen with a lot of higher proof whiskeys. But there's certain ones that I, I feel like have this sort of earthy, uh, juicy type of mouthfeel that you're like barbecue, steak, you know, things that you just kind of tear into and has has a juice to it. Mm -hmm. um, is is what comes to mind yeah is it a little bit is it is this salty oh yeah a little bit a little dry rub right that's just you, you imagine like a i don't know like a like, like a sweet bacon type savory that's kind of <laughs> oh, i love it, it. You know? i love it um it is um jimmy leg is saying uh he's asking an interesting question he's saying am i having fun because i'm drinking more than normal or because this is fun jimmy can't but, it be both can't it be both <laughs> um, and then Neil Cochran is saying Knob Creek dry chocolate powder chocolate so I'll have to catch up which Knob Creek was the one just before that one wasn't it there are a lot of ambulances going by us yeah there are um, another thing I don't know how much pairing food pairing you do with other whiskeys Roy but a, a great thing to do when you're having more of a bourbon night is to get some chocolate and I feel like the, the, the past two that we did would be um, would would be excellent. That Knob Creek pairs really well with chocolate. The Stag, I feel like, would do. Could with... you take a break a moment ago to go and get some? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take that break. I'm going to I'm going to um, ask you. You can, can you read the chat? Can you see the chat? Yeah, we can. We can. Okay. Can I leave you in the capable? Uh, can I leave the community in the capable hands of Chad and Sarah while I oh, go I and get? We can some manage a chat. I think we can do it. Chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> we can handle. I'll be back in a moment. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Why did why did he air quote chocolate? What does that mean? Well, maybe it's like a different. Um, they have different chocolate over there. Well, he was ta talking about different types of candies that they have. Who knows no, what okay. kind of chocolate he's going to get? I don't know. It could I, be a brownie. It could be a, a chocolate covered pretzel. Right. Yeah. Which I do enjoy now. Excuse my bag noises. I I have some pretzel M and M's, which I've never paired with bourbon, but I'm intrigued by this stag. Um, I'm sorry for the chewing. That's like classless American thing, right? Right. The chewing into the microphone, right? See, Michael yes. Michael Taylor says, did he just say chocolate? <laughs> Maybe. Ooh. So a pretzel m m with Sag Jr. And the nice thing is we both have a pretzel element. Oh, the, the oh. salty from the pretzel yes. with the Sag Jr. Recommend. He totally called it with the salt. Yeah. No, there is a, what a salty nice... but also a savory element. Mm. Mm. British chocolate is definitely different. Okay. Chocolate. Mm. I'm just gonna have just just a touch more to enjoy with my pretzel. Uh, there's a super chat over, over on Aquavite's channel. Uh, Glenn saying next time you do scotch. I mean, we we would definitely love to have. So I was trying to throw that in earlier because I feel like we're having yeah. such a fun guided experience. Oh, well, um, totally. But it's it's a one way, right? I mean, we're experiencing it together, but we are familiar with this terrain. Yes. If you will, mm -hmm. uh, I would love to have Roy lead us down the same path. Switch roles, you know. I think that would be a lot of fun. Wait, pretzels with a P instead of a B is just wrong. What does that mean? What does that mean? I don't know. How do you spell pretzels with a B? Bret bretzels. Bretzels? <laughs> bretzels? I don't know. Is pretzels a Sorry thing? That. Thank you for letting me have a. a well, I have to accept. I, I heard you questioning the the air quotes, but 
<laughs> it's a diuretic. The alcohol is a diuretic, and the higher the ABV, right, the more. Uh, so, so thank you for a very rare thing because I'm doing this on my own. I don't get the luxury of being able to say, "Give me a minute." Oh but yeah. While I was gone, I did pick up some some chocolate, seventy percent cocoa, so kind of mid. Oh, mid. that's some cacao. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll give it a little try. But are you recommending that I have it now with the stag or wait till? Uh, Do it with the stag. We liked it with the stag. Actually, we had some chocolate covered pretzel things, and the salt note that you pointed out in the stag is really working well with the salt on the pretzel and the chocolate. Oh my god! So it's very good. I'm I'm actually just having <laughs> pretzel him and nims. <laughs> Very pedestrian. I'm just doing chocolate covered. But wow. these are pairing wonderfully with the stag junior. Well, I do I've got some chili chocolate there, I've got some salted chocolate, but I just got the plain chocolate. Do the salted with the with the stag. I think that you will really like that. You know, if you're gonna analyze whiskey and try and dissect it and pick out every flavor. Probably food pairings aren't a good idea, but for every other occasion, they're a fabulous idea, right? Yeah, yeah. Especially after, you know, on your sixth whiskey, you get a little hungry. You get a little munchies. I'm yeah. not going to lie. I was hungry. <laughs> yeah. It's nice. It is. Uh, nice. Glenn Anderson has said the same. Next time you do scotch. No, so that's what that's we were, what talking, we're talking, talking about yeah. while you were gone is that we would love to do a role reversal here where you lead us through the through the scotches. I'll it would be a pleasure. It would be I'll a pleasure if, a if you it. of the scotch that we have. And again, thanks to our wonderful community, we actually do have some samples of some pretty diverse things. So I think yeah, we could... I would love love to to do this mm -hmm. uh, opposite opposite day. Oh, and the scotch dummies, which I saw in the chat earlier. I don't know if they're yeah, they're they're right there. I don't know if that's Scott or Bart, but or both. But um, long time ago, they sent, they sent us, us lots of samples. Some samples, and we still have uh, some of those. We usually try not to drink it all, so we have it to you know compare as we mature as we mature through our um, whiskey without any journey. <laughs> journey. Yeah. yeah, I have to take my hat off to Scott and Bart at Scotch Test Dummy. Sometimes we forget about the amount of influence that they've had over a community. Absolutely, mm. sharing a journey. And the kind of the chemistry that they bring, um, all the kind of concepts that we've come uh, live streaming. There was when they started to live stream, there was not another whiskey channel doing it. They're the pioneers, right? It's true. Yeah, absolutely, they did. And I, I remember that when they started to live stream with other channels and started that collaboration and things, it just uh, it inspired me. That was the whiskey community I wanted to be part of. I was mm. already enjoying it, but they kind of ignited the ground there. And uh, and obviously, we've we've all come to know Scott and Bart and just how funny and how, how great guys that they are and uh, some of the things that they do. And now what they've done is they've gone from being the Scotch Test Dummies and now one uh, review a week is an American whiskey and the other one is a World Whiskey or a Scotch. So they've they've spread their, their blanket really, really, their net, let's say, yeah. really far. Mm -hmm. They're bringing a lot, a lot of content out there. Um, Neil Cochran is saying, watch the chocolate, Roy. It'll be all gone in the morning and you'll regret it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's quarantine. Don't even worry about quarantine, it. Man, that's right. Jimmy Legg is saying food pairings are not a good idea. Ah, Jimmy, you're suffering as well. I know what it's like. Scotch Test Dummy Scott is saying too kind, Roy. I'm not being too kind. I'm being, uh, I can only be uh, honest. I'm just echoing things that we would say elsewhere out of earshot as well, Scott. It's always good to have you on. I'm very much finding the chocolate more ish as well. <laughs> Now, just wait until you, we get into cheese. Oh, cheese. <laughs> oh, yes. no, but cheese. Mm, cheese, and cheese. Hard, waxy cheese and scotch is, is transcendent. And times. you would never think, no, that's, right? That's getting probably, into getting into the whiskey world, you would yeah. not think whiskey and cheese. That's probably something that, that we need to tackle. We've done it with bourbon, but we had a – it was a Basil Hayden um, two-by-two two rye. That we did. Uh, sorry, not... What did you call it? <laughs> I know. I want to oh, call it basil. I want to call it basil, but apparently Jim Beam doesn't like it when you call it basil Hayden. I was told to say basil Hayden. So here we are. We do. Oh, if somebody's <laughs> given name, then that's right. Then you have to be respectful. It's a given name. It's exactly. Not, it's not a herb. A herb. Yeah, herb. Yeah, yeah. It's not. <laughs> it's not HBO. It's HBO. Um, but uh, there was a basil Hayden's. Two by two rye that we did not enjoy neat, 
It was but, very apricot, yes. peachy. But when we paired it, and Sarah was the one who suggested this, it was it was a uh, brie and so like just a soft cheese and um some some uh I think it was apricot marmalade and crackers. That really did it. I mean, oh. it came full circle. Um, and I think that's when we really started to realize that cheese went with bourbon. And so after that, we did a whole cheese mix and match, you know, cheese to find the perfect bourbon pairing night. And we probably had 30 bottles on this table <laughs> uh, and a whole big spread and just trying to figure out what goes night. with what. It was a very good night. Very I good made notes, and now I can't find them. I'll have to do it again. Um, oh. Yeah, it's good stuff. I have to say that you know I've met I've met with people and I've been in company where people say that eating food with whiskey or any kind of whiskey is sacrilege. They say, "Oh no 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 no," and it's kind of like stop. This this creation is only exists to make us realize that we are mortal yeah. and we're with these sensory receptors, and it's our jobs that while we are mortal to stimulate them in the best most pleasurable possible way that we can. And if we find that mixing whiskey with some really nice savory snacks does that, but it does it in a way that, as you touched on, uh, Sarah, Sarah that, that that you don't expect, it doesn't make sense that it can work, and yet it really, really does. Right. Well, like in the in the case of that uh, Basil Hayden, um, it would have been a bottle that would have just sat there and not not have been drunk, but we found this pairing and, you know, now the bottle's half gone. And if we ever get more of that combo, I'm sure we'll polish That's off when we go for the it, bottle. Yeah. Like, you know, why would you want something that you don't enjoy just to sit there and collect dust or pair it and enjoy it? Yes, I agree with your sentiment fully. Listen, before, uh, in case anybody hasn't worked it out, we are not going to meet the two hour target tonight. But I'm having a really nice time, and I don't care. We're here for the for the duration. Um, so what we're what what I haven't teased at all is that the, there is a quiz at the end tonight, but it's with a twiz, a twist, a twiz. My a goodness. Twist. And the twist is that I haven't prepared that I am participating in a bourbon quiz tonight that's been put together by uh, Chad and Sarah, and they're going to be hosting the quiz tonight. I didn't want to say any earlier in case I scared you all running. <laughs> For the for the heather, but listen to me. Listen before you disappear. Know that I fully expect to a pass mark tonight is thirty three percent. Seriously, because it's bourbon. It's outside of the majority of the chat's comfort zone. So now we need to stay and participate in the in, in the quiz that Chad's put together, and we all step into our final uh, our final dram tonight. I just want to clarify. Um, yours is twenty eighteen oh four. Yes. Okay, good. That's what I grabbed. Wonderful. Are Kitchen. you are you on Corking or is that open? No, it's, it's it open. is open. Um we well, had look, a bottle open before this one. This is our second bottle, mind you. I showed you this the other day and it was up to about here. Ooh, you it here. On it's it. not because I've been drinking it. I don't the samples. It. Yeah. I, I, I shared it out. So everybody has this. And this is a gift again. This was a gift from Phil and Deepa at Whiskey Mystery over in San Francisco. Um, when they came over, they brought a bunch of bourbons um, to share with everybody that they met in distilleries in Scotland and up and down the UK whiskey shops. Wherever they were going in, they were carrying open mm. bottles of bourbon and they were taking it out of their backpack and pouring it for people. <laughs> wonderful evangelism, right? Wonderful sharing. And then um, they said, look, okay, we've, we've, we've saved this for you, Roy. We would like you to have this. I have loved every sip of this. Every sip. That makes me tear up a little bit. This is one of my favorite <laughs> bottles of the Booker's releases. Yeah. It's in my top three. Is it, is, is it really that good? Yeah. We keep, we, people will be like, oh, they're just Booker snobs. And it's like, I can't help it. I always come back to this bottle. I really love. Well, I have no idea. I have no uh, preconception of Booker's at all. I, I, I don't come at it from a, from that kind of, I don't view that landscape the way that you do or, the way that your community perhaps does, it's just another bottle of bourbon to me. But this is such a an elegant, balanced prospect of a whiskey that, yes, it tastes of bourbon, <laughs> but there's so much more. Mm. Every you, That was a tough bottle for me to reach past. Yeah. I had to put this at the back of the cabinet because it was, <laughs> it, was, it was going down so quickly. A man after my own heart. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, we we get every release of Booker's now since probably 2016. So there are ones that 
are a little off profile. Um, the ones that don't exceed expectations and there's ones that do exceed expectations. And this was one that did. So you've got a good bottle there, my friend. So thank you, Phil and Deepa, you superstars. Again, the, the, on the nose, it's muted to me tonight. I think everything's been dampened a little bit. Mm. I get a bit of that nuttiness that, again, it is akin to the to the Knob Creek. So I, I do get a bit of that, like, um, peanut, that toasted peanut note. Yes. So but that, that, that's so reductive, isn't it? Just to say, oh, yeah, get roasted peanut. Because there's so there's many other things more. here. Yeah. Really, it's like. It's an atmospheric nose. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. This one more than the Knob Creek has like the you're in a restaurant that has peanuts being cracked. It's like the particulate effect. Right. An atmosphere. It's more of a yeah, it is more of an atmosphere. And you know what's weird is this is only 0.1 proof higher than the Stag Jr. This is 128 on the dot. The Stag Jr. was 127.9. This one, the nose doesn't smell as hot, but wow. Something about that just makes me melt. But it's com it's so different than the stag. I feel like this is a little bit more easy on you. It is. Less of a kick. No, that, that's it. The only, gift, the only giveaway that this is high ABV is the effervescence. Mm. You know, the way that they kind of, it's very sippable. It, it's not, the stag would probably make you want to reach and play with water a little bit. This not so much. Right. I completely agree. This does seem to be a little bit more balanced. And yeah. Yeah. The, word, the word I used was elegant. And I know that that's bizarre when you talk about a 64%, sorry, a 128. <laughs> I'll allow it. Um, whiskey. But it, but it, there is there is an elegance there. Yeah. Um, whiskey, mystery, Phil and Deepa are actually in tonight. And they've admitted that they have still not tried Booker's. Oh, oh, what a special day. <laughs> no, sorry. But do you have some? <laughs> this is about, there's not much chance of you getting to try this one. Just come over to our house. We've got oh, plenty. plenty. <laughs> wow. Uh, John, John Della Cuisine is saying, I need bookers in my life, having so much fear of missing out. FOMO. Oh. Daniel Vermas is saying, where is Sarah's love for Henry McKenna? Ooh. I do, I do enjoy a good Henry McKenna, yeah. uh, but uh, I'm sorry, Heaven Hill is near and dear to my heart. Uh, a couple years ago, Henry McKenna would be my number one, like, recommend for, for. for value purchase. It was I'm 10 years it. old. It's, it's, it's a good value. It was. It now, was. it's been named, uh, I think it won the 20, Last year? it was 2019 or 2018. I think it was 2018. It won the World Spirit. Uh, San Francisco San World San Francisco Spirits. World Spirits. And so then it became virtually impossible to find. Uh, and then when you could find it, they were marking it up, you know, a lot. And so when I used to love it, it would be 28 to $32, 10 years old, uh, bottled barrel. and bond. Yeah, single barrel. I mean, it was just a steal. And now you can't find it on the shelf anymore. So we've so moved you've, on. You've, you've got lots of fans and lurkers in this chat tonight that obviously know you well. Lurkers. They're like, oh, she loves Heaven Hill. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Listen, what we've been doing tonight as well that I haven't mentioned is I've got some paper, just it's just a light color paper in front of me. I've been putting the glass down on the paper and you can see the color looking top down, which is a nice thing to do rather than kind of that way. Yeah. I'm, I'm struck by the color of this. This is vibrant copper as well. Everything is just is gorgeous. You've only got a little in the glass. You have to be a bit more nice to yourself. Pour some more. Get see and, and just hold any other glass alongside it. And see what I'm talking about. <laughs> it is very it's like polished copper. Yeah. You don't have to tell me to drink more bookers. <laughs> I think that bookers gets a bad rap. Because I think people underappreciate it. Uh, we do get, um, since uh, 2015, 2016, four releases a year. And they're generally available. I think 16. The price has been climbing a bit over the past <clears throat> few years. But it's something that I think is the quality of a limited release that isn't is, a limited is, is release. always available. Right. And that's kind of been our argument. I think argument. that's why people knock it. People are always, oh, Booker's went up ten dollars. Is it worth it anymore? And and that's that's a fair, a fair a fair question to ask. But 
I feel like if Booker's wasn't always on the shelf when you went into a liquor store, and again, we're speaking from Kentucky's perspective, perspective. but if it wasn't always on the shelf, you would be like, oh, where's the Booker's? I want to pay that $90 or whatever it is for We it. felt that. Yeah. Just trying to find the new releases of it. Right. But you so can many of the the topics, So many of the subjects, the dynamics that we talk about in whiskey are really just a manifestation of our human side. Mm. We always want to come at a critical, cynical angle, don't we? But and it's sometimes even, it's nice when there are people that have kind of considered these things to yeah. get a perspective to think about. Um, but it seems like they 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 aren't being that critical or cynical towards other brands. It just seems like Booker's is a little bit of the punching bag. So, ex for example, the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof comes out three times a year, but you can't find it on the shelf. So it's a very similar release rate not, to Booker's. Not here. Not here. You can't find it on the shelf where we are. You will occasionally come across one in a lottery or whatever. You find someone who knows someone who has a bottle and you buy it or whatever. Oh. Um, and that almost never gets knocked. But they're roughly this around the same price point. I mean, it's a little around bit less. the same proof. Both great quality from two, you know, really well known, uh, credible distilleries, and and yet this one gets a lot more of a tough time from people. They have a harder time putting the money down for it. Yeah. I just think it's very interesting how they're so similar on paper. Yeah, Thomas Elmer is in tonight, and he gifted me a bottle of uh, Elmer T. Lee when we were in Texas. <laughs> Um, I have to say it was similar to this in the elegance factor, but the Elmer T. Lee was much softer. It was much, much Very easier to drink. And uh, it's actually over my shoulder and people might be able to see how much I've been able to drink. But anyway, um, uh, and he's saying, uh, Booker's a bad rap. Is that from the 2017 So he's maybe making quite a, a specific reference there. Oh, 2017 would have been, was that Kathleen's or Teresa's? No, that was like 20. 19. Oh, was it? Yeah. Gosh, I can't remember. I don't that. recall 2017-01. Being... I recall 2017-04, which is my favorite of all time. Yeah, I don't recall that one being a big stinker. So I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not I'm sure we have it. We'll have Somewhere. to revisit it. Yeah. But, but what you've what you've got in me and what you've got in the guys that we'll bring in for the quiz at the end tonight as well, what you've got from us is very fresh, open-minded. We don't really in Scotch, we've kind of pigeonholed all the brands, right? Mm -hmm. We do it. We we all suffer from it. But, but bourbon, I don't think so much. So I'm coming at this completely on a kind of level playing field of all of the brands that you've shared with me tonight. So so that's uh, that's interesting. Any opinions that I'm sharing about this bourbon is that these all these things that you're sharing with me now are new to me. Mm. Um, I but, am interested at this point. You know, obviously we can't take it as a 100% answer because you have had seven pours uh, and you are comparing them against each other versus having them in a vacuum. But what would you say would be the one, if you, any of these seven that you would reach for first, again, which one would it be? Oh. In, the interests, in the interests of, uh, I have to be honest. Now, we have to bear in mind that lots of the whiskeys I've poured tonight have been gifts. Yeah. From the community. Now, here's an interesting dynamic that I'll present to you for your consumption. I refuse gifts from the industry. If the industry asks me uh, for an address to send me some things, I say, no. But if you're confident about it, I'll buy it myself and you just tell me about it. Let's have let's have a conversation about it and things because I'm funded by the community. I'm in a very fortunate position because I don't want to be biased mm. when I share an opinion and evangelize to the community. I want the community to know that I'm evangelizing about a product that has really got me. Mm -hmm. However. If the community gift me something, I never want to be anything but positive about that generous gift. <laughs> right. That's, yeah. So, so what I have to do is if I've set up my car. I saw it. It has to be brutal. There are whiskeys here in this lineup that are, that are beaten by other whiskeys in this lineup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's not me picking the person who gifted. I'm still going to enjoy every single drop of liquid that's here and relish it. And the one I have to say is that is the stand the one I want to go back. There's two that I want to go back. There's there's two that I can judge by that Moorish measure. The one that's made me want to sip, and it's dangerous because you go back and you sip more and more. And it's the Knob Creek and the Bookers. Ah, a Jim Beam man after our own. A Jim Beam man. <laughs> both both Jim Beam. Oh. Yeah. Right, that's a shame because Jim Beam, uh, the pro the the distilleries that they own, 
and 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 the Scotch landscape are la official bottlings, not what they make at the distillery level, but what they release to the to the general public shelf are, are faltering. I'm afraid. Mm. Yeah, they're yeah. not doing well at all. Um, it's interesting though. that they're able to do it in their in, in the states. Yeah. That, that doesn't surprise me. I think, you know, there there's a thing, you know, you try too many things and you can't be good at everything, right? I think that their strength really does lie in the bourbon world. Well, I mean, they, they're they the the best-selling bourbon, you know, and I, and I think a lot of that comes from America. So they've, they have to cater to that, to that market. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's so much that because I think that some of the distilleries that they, that they have, um, under their umbrella in the UK and in Scotland, sorry, are uh, Ardmore, Glengarry, Laphroaig. I mean, really, really wonderful distilleries that make wonderful stuff. And all you have to do to be re reminded of that is to, is to have an independent bottling or a single cask. Mm. It's amazing. But the official bottling is often f pointed towards mass market. Ah, that sounds right. It's, it's often packaged in a way that is not attractive to an enthusiast that's watered down the the edges all the character have been knocked off to make it approachable soft enjoyable quaffable all of these things so what once you've moved past that onto an enthusiast level you're not interested in soft and easy you're, you're sitting with a dram to have an experience it's not a social lubricant for you um so yeah it, it's sort of like I, I would put it in the analogy of like pop music that's produced for the masses becomes very polished. There's no personality. There's no mistakes or little quirks that make things interesting. It's quantitized and to the exact beat and so polished. Whereas right. something that's more indie it's all, it's boring. or more underground has the quirks, has the mistakes, has a little bit of rough edges that you appreciate because of it. One of the words that's often used to to be derogatory towards the Scotch uh, producers that behave in that way is homogenized. Yeah. Mm. Um, the music analogy is perfect. It makes absolute sense. And, uh, you know, you, but we have to understand that we're very niche and we yeah. occupy a niche area of the, of the market. And the mass market products are doing a fantastic job of engaging people and getting them into whiskey. And, mm. Virtually without exception, the people that's in the community tonight and us, our gateway product was probably a mass market product, right? Yeah. Sorry, I just saw Kilko say Mbop whiskey. Mbop. Um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. We all got the the uh, Hanson reference. The, the Hanson wave of music over there, but uh, that's what that's referring to. Okay, I'm going to ask you the same question before we roll into the quiz. What would you reach for? What would be the one that you want to go back and put again? I think the last three or where I would be living. The Knob Creek, which is our pick, so duh. Uh -huh. uh, the Stag Junior, I really want to see how that one does open up because I feel like that neck pour was a little bit uncharacteristic of what we normally know of Stag Junior. So I'd like to see how that opens up, but it was rather good. Uh, I went back to there. There's the licorice and the wine, the red. <laughs> yes. yes. And then, obviously, the Booker's is Booker's. Yeah. For me, I think it's less of a hard and fast, I would pick these three, and more of a where am I and what am I doing? Um, you know, we do, it gets very hot in Kentucky, so I've had days where I want to drink Booker's, and I literally can't because it's so hot outside. Um, and so then I would go for something more along the lines of the the Four Roses or the Elijah, Elijah Craig. Craig yeah. um, if we're at, like, you know, we've been to plenty of, not recently, sadly, but plenty of outdoors events like tailgate parties and um, festivals. festivals and yeah. things where Elijah Craig, that 94 proof is perfect for that setting. Um, so there are tailgate parties. Yeah, yeah. tailgate. That's an Americanism. Wow. <laughs> we play Football, cornhole. We play and cornhole. Flip, flip cup and, and, and we make burgers and hot dogs. It's really, no, if you're ever here. Uh, we will bring you to a tailgate, and, and then we have a with bourbon. Then we have a wee dram. Wee dram. We have a wee dram. Um, but if I dram, a tailgate party. <laughs> you know, if it's a cozy night at home, I'm gonna have a Booker's. I'm gonna have that Stag Junior. But I'm gonna choose that Knob Creek. I will say that I feel like Booker's stands up well to a big block of ice. Agreed. Pour this over a you know a, a sphere of ice or a cube, big cube of ice, it stands up pretty well. 
I think I've missed the boat on that experiment. Oh, that's okay. This is one where I'm like, you're going to get your money's worth because even if you if you pay for it and you drink it neat, it's delicious and rich and amazing. If you pay for it and you want to pour it over ice, it's still going to stand up. That flavor is not going to diminish because you did that. And so you're going to get more for your money, even so. I'll say this, Roy. You come to Kentucky and we will send you back with as much bourbon as you can legally fly back with. Whatever well, you I'll, I'll bring the family so that we've got extra space. Okay, good. Perfect. We will and, and interestingly, we had a girl, a wonderful girl called, called Maria. She married um, a guy from the States. I think he's originally from Minnesota, but they're, they've now moved back to the States and they're living in Kentucky. Oh. oh. So, well, there's, there's kind of a few things that's going to that's gonna draw us back to your neighborhood. So that'll be interesting to see. And I'm very always- welcome in our friend, our mutual yeah. friend, Vito. Uh, Vito has uh, just joined Aquavite Barflies. Welcome in, Vito. It's nice to have you here, my friend. Enjoyed hanging out with you the other night. And Brian Brennicke said, did Chad just say he'd have a dram? Yes. Dram doesn't need to be um, uh, like a cutesy little kind of Celtic thing. It can be everybody is encouraged to use the word dram. I once read an article where they talked about the word dram being used in very uh, snobby context, and I said no. I'm going to use dram. I'm going to overuse dram. That <laughs> word has to be democratized. Everybody <laughs> has to say the word dram. It's very, it's meant in a very, very uh, open way. Listen, I'm going to bring in our other guys to get a quick opinion from them. Yeah. And then we need to get this quiz on the go because you've put some effort in for us. And I, I don't mind being embarrassed. I've been embarrassed before and I'm happy to be embarrassed. That was all chat. Before. I'll just say that. Oh, so you can participate. I can participate. I don't know the questions. Wonderful, excellent. So and you're, I, I bar, you're the setting the bar for the community I and many of the amateurs. Sound good? Sounds good. Okay, let's bring in Neil first. Let's uh, let's get a quick. Oh, let's Neil. let's not bring in Neil. <laughs> Neil's door. Let's wait till Neil comes back from his Who's job. Let's watch Neil. <laughs> Whose job? He's a, he's. A it skate. was your day. Oh man. Uh, let's bring in Sevi. How are you, big guy? Oh no! No, I'm, I'm, I'm literally. I tell you, I'm, I'm you like, Kentucky you know, hug. I tell you, no, yeah, that's definitely a Kentucky hug. I feel like I'm in a Kentucky coma. Um, <laughs> Hashtag Kentucky coma. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, uh, I should have asked for a thumbs up before I go. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. On, I'm joking. I'm joking. It's, Can uh, I ask no, what you're feeling, though? Uh, I know I've I've really enjoyed the the flight. Uh, there's some amazing flavors coming through. I do like my. Uh, uh, my bourbons and my rice especially um but there's been so many different flavors uh, i love the banana notes that have come through I, I know we were talking about that kind of hard candy and um, that, that we kind of have over here i don't think you guys have it over there but uh, i've also am i allowed to put a brand on screen yeah oh, no. is that is that I mean, allowed? sorry that's call is it okay that's so like this is like some of the best chocolate that you get here, the Salty Caramel Galaxy. Now, yeah, I'm a Cadbury's is... guy. I'm a Cadbury's guy. Ah, uh, he's a Cadbury guy. Chocolate over that stuff. But you have to pick that a stuff favorite. will change your life. Put your nail your Sorry. color to the mast. Pick a favorite. You've just you're only allowed to uh, choose one. You must. Well, I was gonna I was gonna go top three. I've got top three here. If you if you're if you're okay with that. I wonder if that's an ABV thing. No, no, no. It, it, like, honestly, from flavor, just from, from flavor wise. See, I love my Eagle Rare. I actually had a question for the guys, but I'll leave that for a bit later. So, uh, okay, let's bring in Neil and Dave and try and get the same input. Neil? Neil? Are you willing, are you willing to um, um, go against the grain okay. a wee bit here? Have you got anything to different? Or you have to pick a favorite? Uh, the Bookers. Right, well, I'll give you my favorite. It's the Knob Creek. Definitely the Bookers. Sevy, Sevy's committed to Knob Creek. Booker's Knob Knob Creek. Creek. Booker's. Did we talk it up though, Neil? Did we talk it up, or did you actually have an experience with it? No. There's, there's, there's a level of complexity I felt in the Booker's that was just excellent. Mm. What I also thought was really yeah, just when they it's that little bit more of that light. Sorry, sorry, Dave. I've brought you in without you your warning. I really apologise, Dave. You have to nail your colours to the mast. What, what would you pick as a favourite tonight? Knob Creek. Wow. That's it. So the Knob Creek was the one that, that I had the reaction to. It and did. I didn't say I mentioned it. That's it. That it was quite... Did you did you pick up on that? Did you did you have the same reaction to the... Did you uh, feel I, the contrast? 
I had to add water very, very fast. <laughs> um, and also, I quite like the Four Roses. Mm. And you like the Four Roses as well. It's very popular, isn't it? Listen, yeah. on everything I've tried tonight has been whiskies I would happily go back to and enjoy. And if we can have Chad and Sarah back again to do the same experience with Scotch, that would be a good result to land on, right? Oh, we to would just, do to just to just yeah. kind of whet the appetite, just to get you interested in exploring a wee bit further. I, I don't know how that. the chat has got on tonight. We've gone on a long time, but for me, the time has not even been a factor. I've just I've been very comfortable. I've been very happy. Again, I might be speaking about ABV again. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I've I've uh, very much. I was looking forward to this this conversation, this this whole thing, and uh, I've enjoyed it every bit. Uh, um, as much as I expected and probably a good bit more as well. Guys, I know that you've been very patient waiting in the background. Andy mentioned he would try and hang on as long as he could. Obviously, he had to pull a wee parachute and leave us, but I know he'll pick up the rest on the replay. Are we all ready to go in and be embarrassed by how little knowledge we have on bourbon? Is that okay? Can we just agree that it's okay to go into this? Is um, people willing to learn, let's say? Mm -hmm. Roy, is the pass mark 33% or 66 proof? What's the... What's the uh... <laughs> yes, 66 proof. That's a, that's a good one. I think right. what we should do is the people that are knowledgeable, bourbon folk, should be should be playing against Sarah. And the rest I'll, of us... I'll write mine down. The, the rest of us just have to go for the, the regular 50% pass mark. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just tell everyone, Roy made me promise that I would make him like softball questions. I would just make him super, super easy. He said, yeah, Roy, you look like funny. a fool. I have a reputation on the internet. He you better make that. them super easy or else there will be hell to play. That is what he said. Chad, I'm you quoting. Know He's going to get you back on those scotch questions down the road when oh, we do this. I have no chance of answering scotch no questions. No chance. No chance. <laughs> just know that you're, yeah, your revenge lies in the future. Everybody that's here tonight is welcome to participate. The same rules of the quiz apply. You're only playing against yourself. You're keeping your own score. Uh, multiple choice. You know, there's a 33% chance of getting every question right, right? Uh, I think so, Chad, if you've set it up the same way. I went with your model. Yeah, A, B, and C. Excellent. 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 I so, wanted to do A, B, C, D, E just to no. like throw it, but I didn't. I resisted. Good, good. Right, so could it's exactly in the spirit of quiz at the end, and and it's I always look forward to this. It's nice for me to participate and feel a bit of the discomfort and frustration that the the community <laughs> feels every time we take care. Okay, let's do a screen share, Shad. Give me your screen share. If, if yeah, you I have to reach up He's to the laptop. Lean. It's oh, it's way up here. Oh, okay. Oh, that's that good angle. That's a good angle. I'm looking forward to this. Neil and Dave and Stevie, are you feeling okay? Y yeah. Absolutely. I, I didn't expect to ask you to stay up. I tell you so what, it's been, it's, been, it's, been a, it's been a big, it's been a big flight. I tell you what, that's the big, biggest tour de force of a, of a flight I've had in a while. Absolutely. Uh, just about. Absolutely. Yeah. It's been great fun though. It's been really good. Good. I'm glad, and I'm glad. I'm glad that you stayed around till the end. I thank you all for your patience. I thanks that everybody who's still participating. John Della Cuisine is saying I've been watching Chad and Sarah's channel for a while now, so I'm quite confident. Ooh, he's he's looking for a good score tonight. Jimmy Legg is saying having a reputation on the internet is not good. <laughs> he's pointing out, mm. <laughs> but it, it's an easy one. So that's a kind of tongue in cheek it's thing. So easy. It's so easy. I don't know if Chad's easy and my easy are the same things. I hope that Chad has a new, softer definition of easy. <laughs> Take it away, Chad. I'm going to write it down on this piece of paper, and I'll hold it up so everybody can see before you reveal. I'll try and read out comments from the chat um, before you make the reveal and things like that, but, uh, but, but we'll commit quite early. And, of course, we've got a 10, 15-second jump on the chat as well, so we should be able to commit ahead of the chat. All right. Take it away, big guy. Thank you so much. Question number one. Eagle Rare has a 20-year version that will be released again this spring. What is it named? Is it A, Eagle Rare 20, B, Double Eagle Very Rare, or C, Very Rare Eagle? Uh, 
<laughs> I love you're all giggling. <laughs> does anybody know? Does anybody know? This is a hard really? This this is is a hard for me. I have never heard of this. I, I have committed it's my answers on the paper already. Um I've committed. I look at the chat, I'm panicking. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Chat's gone. My chat's gone. I've heard of a double eagle. Well, it's uh, something sounded like the double eagle very rare, but I don't know whether I can't even say double oh, eagle very rare after a flight like that. Walking past Sevi, that's what that is. <laughs> Dave, have you any idea? Neil, have you any idea? Absolutely none. Yeah, I was going to say A Roy, but then I looked at the chat and I thought, no, B looks a better bet. See, that's cheating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, what that's the thing yes. is with. 10 or 15 yeah, seconds. Yeah. All right, we're I, I have committed to B. As well, have I. <laughs> okay, the answer is B. B. Oh, pure luck. Cool. Cool. Very good. Pure luck. Which costs an insane amount of money here. I think the bottle is $20,000. No. Oh, my days. Not that much. Uh, I'm pretty sure it is. Maybe. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, you can't get one right now. It's impossible. Oh, well, right. It's so out of our league that I can't even remember what, what it costs. All right. I've seen it listed for $20,000. <laughs> are you guys ready for question number two? We are. Absolutely. Okay, here we go. Elijah Craig Smallback lost its H statement in 2016. What H statement did it used to carry? Was it A? Nine year, B, 10 year, or C, 12 year. Lock in your votes now. Lock. I'm going to give myself a tick. I'm feeling confident about this one. Thank you for softballing some of the questions, Chad. <laughs> so he's confident on this one. This one's easy. Oh, I mean, yeah. trousers taken down then. I'm going to pour a Thomas H. Handy in celebration. Ooh, <laughs> really? I hope you're yeah, sure. Yeah, why not? Yeah, since I'm lying. 2014, so that's the... I think Jimmy Legg's pulling a bit of a huff tonight. He was looking for more of a challenge. Well, Sorry, this was Bourbon 101. This yeah. is a very soft. This is, do you know what? The, the challenge here is if, if you make a really bad job of this, I guess it shows just how little you know. I should be careful what I say for online question too. <laughs> so it sounds like we're ready then, right? Yep. Okay. Correct answer is C, 12 years. Yes. All right. Question number three. Which of these would accurately describe the OESQ mash bill from Four Roses? Is it A, high rye and rich fruit, B, low rye with delicate grains and light floral character, or C, high rye with delicate rye and mint? Chad, this is a hard question. Well, they can't all be softball questions, Sarah. This is, I don't even know the answer. <laughs> I think it's. Don't tell them. No, I need I need her help. <laughs> did, okay. did you did you mention something about this earlier? I'll just go ahead and give you guys this. I'm pretty <laughs> sure Q is a high rye because I know that I tend to gravitate towards OESQs. But I think that Chad, I think that Chad was. Did you talk about this tonight? I sure did. Were you all taking notes? I know what it is. No. <laughs> well, this was going to be on the test. I told you that. It doesn't say in the label, right? <laughs> it doesn't. Are you are you picking it up? Well, I've got the actual bottle here, Neil, <laughs> and it probably yeah. I'd be cheating, right, if I didn't know. That's a total guess. A for me, but that's a guess. I've I've guessed as well. Right. Uh, I guess, I'm, I'm guessing the same as Sarah. I'm I'm I think this is a trick question, and I object. All right. The correct answer is. B. Wow, you guys, I was wrong. I led you astray. Yes. I was listening. I was listening. I told you, Roy, that I don't know my uh, Four Roses letters as well as I should. Well, well I somebody has asked if any of these, it's Chad, if you know what OESQ means. Um, Graham Fraser wants to know what the OESQ, do you know what it stands for? Is it an acronym? Uh, well, the O and the S are always the same. O is Four Roses, S is, is straight bourbon whiskey. The E and the Q are referring to the mash bill and the yeast strain. So the Q is, uh, I believe the Q, no, it's, is it See, the here's e? where we get hung up. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I think it's the E uh, is, One moment. is the low rye. 
Um, e mash bill is 75% corn, 20% yeah. rye, which is considered their low rye. Yeah, so E is the mash bill. Uh, the Q is referring to uh, the yeast strain. The yeast strain you know, what characteristics it has and so forth. In this case, it's delicate grains and light floral character. I think that was a dirty question. Well, yeah, it was. I, I thought it was an over easy Sarah question. He is low rye, he is high, and he's a, he's also uh, right that you shared it earlier, that you did share it earlier. Sorry, who did I interrupt you? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just saying, I thought it was an over easy Sarah question. I thought that's what the OESQ standard for. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Over easy Sarah question. I That's love it. That's funny. I like that. I love nice. it. Yeah. No, I, I I made only one of them be the low rye. I thought that would make it. I don't know. Anyway. All right. Question four. Disagree. <laughs> Russell's Reserve single barrel is stored in a lever level four char barrel. What nickname is given to this level of char? Is it A, alligator char, B, old brick char, or C, desert char? Do you guys like my uh, announcer voice? Desert. I love it. I love it. I have to say that I, I'm, I'm not going to say anything, actually. I won't say it now because I, I don't want to lead people to the wrong answer. We good? Everyone got theirs? Yeah. That's the only one I've heard of. The correct answer is alligator char. Come on. Yeah, we all knew that yeah. one. Our big did a special release for um, a, one of their... Uh, Special releases, <laughs> and it was a big alligator, and it was referring to the to the char in the barrel. Excellent, okay. very good. Excellent. Question five. Okay, this is a oh uh, good god. This is a pot still from a distillery. What distillery is this from? Is it A. Willet, B. Woodford, or C. Woodenville? All W's here. Yeah, you've picked up in the Aquavitae quiz themes, definitely, Chad. This is a good quiz. <laughs> I'd have to say that I'm throwing a dart at this one. Is anybody else in the dark? Oh. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go with my gut. I think it definitely begins with a double year, that's for sure. It does. It does. Oh, that's a good guess. I'm wrong. <laughs> These are not uh, it's, it's quite well, small. It's guess. It's a distillery I've never visited before. That's correct. I've only been to one of these three. I can tell you that the, the chat is a wee bit all over the place, but there is a looks like there's a majority lean to my my gut instinctive uh, through no intelligence whatsoever, just by guessing. I think that the chat, right. what's your gut, Roy? Will it? It's will it. Oh, nice. Yep. Oh, boys, I'm on a fast work. I I'm off higher. I can relax now for the rest of the crowd. <laughs> he got his 33%. <laughs> that picture taken by me on a tour several years ago, by the way. Okay. Excellent. Question okay. six. Besides the Knob Creek single barrel select, which is what we drank tonight, how many other expressions are there? Of uh, Knob Creek. Is oh, it wow. three, five, or six. Now keep in mind that this is counting the one that we tried. So it would be four total, six total, or seven total. I was hoping one of the answers was, was a lot. <laughs> I will accept a lot. Okay. I will not accept that that thing no. a lot. <laughs> Jimmy Leg, is, Jimmy Leg is complaining again. Jimmy, stop your whinging. <laughs> Brad Leclerc is in. Good to see you, Brad. With only two blind guesses so far. That's another guess. Greg's Whiskey Guide is on four out of five. <laughs> okay, so usually I ask what the scores is at the halfway point, but I'll ask after, I'll ask after the ninth <laughs> with one question to go. There's nine questions? There's ten. What? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I need to conserve my paper. <laughs> Okay, all, all answers are locked in. Here we go. Yes, yeah. yes. Correct answer is C, six. Ah. Seven total. Seven total. Uh, for those who are wanting to know, it's the 100 proof small batch, the 100 proof rye, the 12 year 100 proof small batch, 
The single barrel select 120 proof is which we had. The single barrel reserve, no, I'm sorry, that's the one we had. The single barrel reserve 120 proof. The single barrel select rye 115 proof. And the smoked maple 90 proof. That's six. Uh, plus the one we had. I have to say, I changed my mind because of the discussion over a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. So I'll, I'll thank you for that wee bonus as we move into seven. Good. <laughs> what other distiller was George T. Stagg famously in a feud with? I know this one. Was it? It's a oh, good oh, he doesn't need multiple joys. Was it A, David M. Beam, B, George Garvin Brown, C, Colonel Edmund Haynes Taylor Jr.? I know this thanks to my uh, supporter and uh, great contributor, Stefan Novak. Who before he he knew that you guys were asked to prepare a quiz tonight, he put together ten bourbon themed quiz questions of which this was one. Oh, oh yeah, that's... it's really interesting. Very what nice. I'm going to do is I'm going to share a, a link to Stefan's bourbon quiz. I'll put it in the description box so anybody after the event tonight can go and participate in Stefan's quiz as well. I think it's a fantastic effort, and nice. I would encourage you, Chad and Sarah, to to participate in Stefan's quiz as well. But this was part of his, uh, his uh, it was a trademark dispute, right? It, it, it was a lot of beef. There was a lot there of beef. There was a lot going there on. There was a lot of beef. Are we ready? Ready. And I believe it lasted for 13 years. <laughs> it lasted a long time. It is Colonel E.H. Taylor. We actually did a bit on that on our Whiskey From Home thing last weekend. Sure did. All right. Question number eight. What statement did Booker No tell his son before he died? Was it Ooh. A, Fred, make sure they don't mess with my bookers. B, Fred, single barrels just don't sell well. <laughs> or C, Fred, this small batch thing is the future. <laughs> That's Sorry, great. Fred, great question. For, uh, Booker No impersonation. Roy, I'm never going to ever say anything about your quizzes from now on. <laughs> Are you struggling, big guy? Well, no. I, remarkably, I think I've I've guessed about three of them. But Chad, you're you're absolutely killing us here, pal. I I, 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 I didn't even, I don't even know who Booker No is, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> I Chad, oh, don't worry. I think it's so easy. So Booker No was the master distiller name behind Bookers. Bookers. All right. Okay. Uh, people would come to the distillery and he would pick cherry barrels uh, and fill it up in these bottles to, to share with his friends. And then Jim Beam was like, hey, why don't we actually do that in a small batch format and, and sell it? And this is one of the first uh, small batches that actually came, came online. This was in 1998, the first uh, Booker's went on market. So oh, I just changed my mind on the answer. Hey, the, the crowd is telling me that I've got my first wrong oh, question. Tonight. Um, hey, Fred, make sure they don't mess my bookers. Damn, that's the the crowd got that right. They absolutely wrong. Thomas yep. Elmer, Thomas <laughs> Elmer really wanted it to be B. <laughs> oh, single bottle thing. <laughs> no, uh, he would find those those special things and, and bottle them for his friends, and that's what he wanted to keep that legacy going. Well, I do believe that he didn't believe real strongly in single barrels. That's why this was still a batch product. Sure. Yeah. All right, next question, number nine. You know, Blanton's famously being the first single barrel, single barrel that was readily uh, marketed. Okay, question nine. Albert B. Oh, Blanton's middle name was A. Booker, B. Bartholomew, C. Bacon. <laughs> I hope this isn't a banana skin. I really hope this is. I'm going to answer banana this skin. quickly before I look at the look at the crowd. The, the, the chat, but I so want it to be C. <laughs> no, because <laughs> Bacon is a is a surname, right? I mean, it's it's entirely plausible. I think you should go with your gut. Oh, I put this question in, Roy, because you had a question. You had a question about Albert Blanton in the in the last week's one that you sent me as a template. Oh yeah, yes, I did. Yes, that was that went out live last week. Mm-hmm. And uh, Scott, uh, 
Um, Matt and Sidar down at the Southern Californian Dram Tram, so-called Dram Tram, they're saying that they sense an ASAC question here. ASAC questions have become a cultural oh, thing around the channel. But you, you disagree? Give us the answer. Put us out of misery here. What okay. what was his middle name? It's going to be Bacon, isn't it? Bacon? Oh, yeah. oh my God. It's Bacon. It's Bacon. Oh. It's Bacon. Tremendous. Bacon. It's got to be Bacon. All right. I'll be, I'll be Bacon Blanton. <laughs> <laughs> last question. No, wait a minute. Just, but just before we go into the last question, let's see if there's yeah. any nine out of nines tonight to see how we're getting on. All right. Eight out of nine for Thomas Elmer. Bill Balistreri is in with eight out of nine. Nine out of nine for Whiskey Jason in Germany. Wow. Woo! He covers bourbon. He loves bourbon. Eight out of nine, eight out of nine. I'm looking for other nine out of nines. The, ch the chat is going crazy. It's going really, really quickly. Whiskey Jason. Can anybody challenge Whiskey Jason tonight on a nine out of nine? I've fallen by the wayside. I've lost a couple recently, but I'm <laughs> fully guessing anyway. <laughs> Precarious Dave. Dave, you're on four out of nine. You need mm -hmm. this pass mark, buddy. You need it. Who names their son Bacon? I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it would have yeah. been a surname. That, uh, name. Oh, back in those yeah. generations, they would have carried yeah. forward surnames, right? So it would have been a, yeah. a family yeah. name. I'm six out of nine here, but that's, that's... You've got a pass mark then. I'm looking for other nines, and I'm struggling to spot it. I need my mods to come in and be the sharp eyes. Okay, good. Well, at least we've got one person going to go score a 10 out of 10 tonight at least if they get this one right. Go ahead, Chad. Give us the final question. All right. This one's a little bit inside baseball, but here we go. Oh. Chad and Sarah have said their favorite series of Ooh. Aquavitae oh. videos are this. Is it A, Whiskey Evangelism, B, Recycled Reviews, or C, Blind Challenges? That's got to be a freebie to depart. We have said this at least two times. Oh, I've said it more than two times. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. You're welcome. <laughs> you weren't supposed to see that. It's for the, for the chat. She could still be wrong. It's got to be that one. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Silip Bang is saying, come on. <laughs> <laughs> DHL was saying, uh, well, I won't say what he's saying, but it's the only right answer. I have to agree with you. Lindsay Oman is saying, uh, if it isn't B, they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Correct answer is recycled reviews. Brilliant, brilliant. Love of it. Yes. Love it. It's amazing what that has done for me. Thank you so much. That means that I score a really, really, I would have. I would have bought. I would have traded bottles of whiskey for this score before I started tonight. Eight out of ten, absolutely. Wow. Guess, guess, guess. A lot of the way. That's great. Um, I'm surprised on you. A couple. Sevy, how'd you go on? Seven out of ten. Great score. A Neil's bacon quiet. For me. Oh, he looks. Neil looks dejected. <laughs> five, boy, five. Pass mark. Pass mark. Dave, did you get your pass mark? <laughs> Oh, guess something different. Maybe oh, oh. have guessed B. The blind challenges, the blind challenges are where it's at. Recycled so reviews from last year. You need to make sure that you... Uh... Recycled reviews are so last year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I disagree. Blind challenges, everybody's doing them. This is a classic example. Is if you listen all the way through while you're enjoying your whiskies, then you'll definitely do well on the quiz. <laughs> and drink. Whiskey Jesus managed a 10 out of 10. What? And I don't think, oh, Brian Brennicky, you star. Boom, 10 out of 10. Well done, Brian. Whiskey Jason. Brian Brennicky. Graham Young as well in Canada has got a 10 out of 10 tonight as well. He's excited. Nice work. Um, so there's three, at least three has got 10 out of 10. Wow. To get that Four Roses question. That Four Roses question was, well, they had the power of Google. That's true. Well. well, not saying that they cheated or anything. <laughs> Wouldn't do that. Roy, are there any non North Americans that have got 10 out of 10? Uh, Whiskey Jason in Germany. Oh, oh well, I guess he is American, right? Oh, um, okay. Or at least if, uh, yeah, yeah, that's interesting as well. Graham Young's in Canada, but he's North American. Um, yeah. I mean, it, that's okay. I'm, <laughs> listen, I don't care. I'm fine with my 8 out of 10. <laughs> I'm good. Be I'm, proud. I'm in great shape. Huh. 
Listen, I want to just, I want to raise a glass. I want to thank everybody for staying with us. That's a full three hour stream tonight. Quite unbelievable. But the team, the, the time has gone by so, so quickly. I've had such a nice, nice whiskey evening. I really have. I always talk about this kind of virtual thing, the V-Pub. But the only thing that's virtual is the space. The people are real, very real. The time is real. It's in real time. And the whiskey is very real. It's speaking to me right now. It's very real. <laughs> um, but I, I, I'm, I'm amazed by it. I mean, I've had the, the privilege of hanging out with Chad and Sarah a couple of times over in the States. And I do sincerely, if you think these, uh, these guys appear nice on camera, meet them in real life. They are lovely, life-affirming people to hang out with for a little while. Um, Sevi, Dave, Neil and Andy who was in earlier, thank you so much for your patience and hanging out in the background with us. Chad and Sarah, thank you for your patience while I had that monologue and introduced the, the kind of game show thing earlier on. You waited patiently in the background. I hope you've had some fun coming along and joining tonight as well. Oh my gosh. Amazing. This, this was so fun. So Good. Love it. Love it. Good. I, I absolutely... I'm now excited to flip the tables mm. and have you back at some point in the future so that I can shine a little uh, a torch on the yes. road ahead, the path ahead for you guys as well. Looking forward to it. Can I remind everybody that Saturday, if you so desire, Saturday is a virtual whiskey festival on the Tomat and Channel. I'm excited about that as well, not least because they've asked me to host it. Of course, it's a great thing. Here's why, because it's a collaborative thing. The industry are coming together, they're coming out of their caves, they're hanging out in the same space, putting themselves on video, and we need to encourage that. We need to let them understand that the water is warm. It's a welcoming and positive place to be. Please come along and hang out with us on the Tomat and Channel between two and five, I think roughly will be the timing on Saturday. And there's Blanton's are going to be involved in that as well, as well as other world whiskies, lots of Scotch whiskies, independent bottlers. It's going to be another interesting afternoon. I hope you come along and enjoy it. Des has bought me a virtual dram. I have no idea what currency that is, but it's czar, 140 czar. And he's saying thanks for a great evening. Happy birthday, Dram. Thank you very, very much, my friend, for your Dram, and thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Slancha. 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 I want to say thanks for everybody. We had a huge crowd in right through there. We're obviously intrigued. That usually the traffic drops up, off significantly for the quiz at the end, but I think there was a lot of interested parties wondering what you'd bring for us. Thanks <laughs> for the effort you put in there as well. Great fun, and it's great fun to participate. It's nice to switch it up a little bit every now and again. I have had a really, really lovely evening. Honestly, it's one of the one of the most comfortable streams I've had, and I think it's because I know you guys, <laughs> and because I was enjoying being led and being introduced to new things. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Let me raise a glass to everybody that's hung about all night tonight. Um, I'll see you on Sunday evening, and I'll see you a week from now with Billy Walker from Glen Allachie. I'm really excited about that as well. Um, if in the meantime you're looking for something a wee bit more laid back, and I promise I will keep it below two hours, I'll see you on Sunday evening. Thank you all you wonderful, wonderful whiskey folk and you dedicated barflies. Slanchava. <laughs> <laughs>